How is it, how's the brightness for you guys? I know it's in the, the 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 stream is embedded essentially in a in a white screen, which is kind of annoying, which probably doesn't help, but checking the temps. Looking okay. I'm beginning to wonder if those dials will ever actually move. I can probably up the gamma in OBS if necessary. Hold on. Suddenly silence. Except for the wind noises, I've noticed that's an interesting little feature. I think it's because it's the wind noises come from AccuFeel and not the actual base game. They're sort of injected on top of it, if you see what I mean. Oh god, we're going into a cloud. Shit. Okay, artificial horizon, you better not be bullshitting me here. <laughs> oh god. There we go. Phew. Um, right. Properties, gamma. Okay, I just increased the gamma. Maybe that'll help a bit. I don't know. Yeah, I'm seeing that as well, Master Matt. I don't know what that's about. One person watching. I beg to differ. All right, well now the question is, where the hell are we? Luckily, I can cheat and use a GPS, I think. Possibly? Please? Can I, please, can I use a GPS? Oh, that, okay, here we go, here are the controls. There we are, right. Okay, Cambridge is off 30 degrees on our left. I, I want to climb, but I also want to stay in the same general area, to be honest with you. Just, you know. Just so we don't get too lost. Uh, there we go. Oh, God. Wrong buttons again. It's Shift 8 for the GPS. Okay. Remember that for future reference. Well, yeah, there's a lot of wind. I'm having to put in a lot of left rudder just to stay relatively level right now. And the temp's doing getting kind of hot, actually. Let's pull that back a bit. Yikes. And I love the fact, by the way, that the reflections on the canopy have died down so much now that it's dark. It does make a lot of sense. Now you can still see that yellow dot there, which is the reflection from the yellow circle on the back of my seat. Now what altitude are we at now? Coming up to 9,000 feet, which is peanuts still really, but... may want to start opening the oxygen valve. Uh, oh 
oxygen system. Apparently it's either on or off, no, nothing in between. Anyway, we'll put it on just to be safe because I have in the past accidentally flown planes without oxygen a little too high and I've blacked out. So. I wonder if this thing has any checklist things that come with it. Sometimes they do. Aircraft, e board, briefing, checklist. Ah, here we go. Avril Lancaster. Operating procedures for Avril Lancaster. Please note that some differences exist between models. Oh, it's good to know that there is a difference. Startup procedure. Make careful note of engine order and controls positions. Pedo switch, heat switch on. Master oh, I should have read this earlier, to be honest with you. Propeller pitch, throttle, and engine idle cutoff switch. Engine starter, press twice, boost and starter. Radiate the shutters open. Flaps at 20. Yeah, we, we, did, we I tried putting flaps at 20 there and I did it a little too late. Elevator, trim elevator slightly forward, rudder neutral. Raise tail as soon as possible. He's off the ground at approximately 105 miles per hour. Raise landing gear, yeah. So 105 is the number to look out for. Emergency climb, 160 miles per hour. We're climbing at 120 right now, which is probably not good. <laughs> Normal climb is 175 miles per hour. Okay. Does that, does that mean my engines are effectively dead at this point? They probably would be, wouldn't they? Um, so my frame rate's being terrible again. It probably means Duxford's somewhere around here. Yeah, the elevators are relatively light and effective. They are. That's true, actually, compared to the ailerons. They tend to become heavy in turns. The ailerons are light and effective, but become heavy at speeds. No, they're not light and effective. Well, maybe for a plane this size, I suppose they are, but... Trim. Okay, stalling. Radiators. Approach speeds. Uh -huh, go around. Interesting. Salt manual operation. She's full details of operating procedures. Okay, yeah. Oh, it's got lots and lots of reference info. All right, cool. Very good. Very good. There are other airplanes flying around. Actually, just not very many at the moment. Uh, there's one up there. That that light over there. That's which just disappeared as I zoomed in. There it is again. Yeah, that's that's another plane. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I should just decrease the boost by a shit ton. Maybe I'm just not giving it enough engine power. I thought I might have been, but I guess I'm not. Oh, hang on a minute. The this gauge is in knots, and the guide is in miles per hour. That explains it. Eh, uh, yeah. Okay then. I can't say there's much chance of me crashing into the sun flying this. It can barely climb up here, let alone. It in space, Jesus. T 
<laughs> Pilot is a vampire to the law. Uh, okay, right. GPS time again. Fuck me, I have no idea where we are. Bloody hell. There's me saying we're not going to Germany, we're, I feel like we're halfway there. Jesus. Turn around. I can see EGSU on the map, that's where we need to be. Come on, you bugger, turn. Whoa, okay, forget I said anything. Okay, don't don't stall, Jesus. Yikes, I didn't think it was going to do that. Alright, you know what, let's see if we can do a corkscrew to port. Oh god, pretend there's a night fighter on our tail and we just sort of... Wow, yeah, we're not really getting much out of this, are we? The idea is you just sort of... Go into a corkscrewing tight dive like this. Wow, you can hear the whole aircraft rumbling as it begins to stall, that's amazing. Do a barrel roll, very funny. I'm pretty sure the wings on this would snap off if we tried to do a barrel roll in it. So there we go, and we did... did ugh. And now we're going incredibly fucking fast, whoa. Yikes. Let's try a sharp right turn. I mean, it's um, it's a big fucking plane. That's what you've got to remember. But for a big fucking plane like this, it's actually relatively manoeuvrable. I mean, allegedly, one of the things, one of the kind of hilarious things, was that the Lancaster could actually outturn some of the German night fighters. This big bastard of a plane could actually outturn some of the Dornier night fighters. So that's what they did. If they found one chasing them, they'd just make a sharp turn to the left or right. What's that tapping noise? Oh, it's the engine bug again. That's all those. So anyway, let's let's freaking go home. Engine bug's still there. Piss off. There we go. Really annoying that. I wonder who is the first pilot to try and outturn a fighter in this thing. Um, probably a very panicked pilot, uh, <laughs> if I'm honest. He was doing whatever he fucking could to stay alive, basically. Um, and now we're in the middle of a cloud, which is kind of scary. Okay, there we go. At night in a plane this big? Fucking hell, I do not want to be in a cloud, thanks. Still getting buffeted around quite a bit. Alright, enough clowning around, let's go land this thing and move on to the main event. Um, if I can just remember how to get the. God damn. There we go. Okay, yeah, EGSU's just dead ahead. Now, I'll either try and land this back at Duxford, or I will land it at Cambridge Airport. Because... Or possibly Stansted. E uh, Echo Golf Sierra Sierra. Is that Stansted? It might be. 
It's got big um, airspace markings around it on the GPS, which would seem to suggest possibly. I'd like to try and get it back to Duxford, but like I said, I don't know if Duxford's got runway lighting. And if it hasn't, then fuck it. We are not going there. We need run lights in this. Alright, let's load the throttle a bit. To cruising speed. Wow, yeah, look at this thing move around. What's the, what's the wind supposed to be like at the minute? Because it's pretty crazy. Big plane like this getting buffeted around. Oof. Uh, Add-ons, AccuFuel, let's see, uh, aircraft volume is fine, turbulence chop, what's that, controls the choppiness of turbulence, turbulence gusts, uh, let's reduce that a bit. I mean, we're in a pretty big, what should be fairly stable plane. I think we're getting buffeted around a little too much, if I'm honest. So let's lower that significantly and see if it makes a difference. That's... That's better. Yeah, that is better. I mean, it's still kind of windy, but wind is wind. This is more manageable, for sure. Come on, the Sywell Aerodrome. Where the hell's Sywell from here? <laughs> also, Sywell's. Oh, fucking Sywell! No! Jesus Christ, yeah. That'll be a fucking challenge for the ages, won't it? Who can land a Lancaster at Sywell Aerodrome? Yeah. A thousand pounds to the winner. Fucking hell. I suddenly remembered what Sywell Aerodrome is actually like. <laughs> um, well, that's... Presumably that's Stansted over there. What I think was Stansted, anyway. Yeah. What's so bad about Sywell? Sywell is a tiny, tiny airstrip that you typically take off with, like, gliders and little Cessnas and stuff. Unless I'm confusing it with somewhere else, anyway, but I'm pretty sure Sywell is very small. Okay, that's Cambridge over there. I can see the cathedral, and that's Duxford in front of us. Which doesn't seem to have any lights. Um, yeah, no, I'm not going to risk it. Let's go try Cambridge instead. I'm surprised at, about that, actually. But then again, I suppose they don't operate during the night, do they? Because they're not a proper airport. They're just a, they're a museum, technically. So I guess it makes a fair amount of sense.
way. Should be over there, yeah it is, okay. Well, let's take this in for a very, very, very wide approach. And we can look at all the pretty twinkly cars down there driving along, minding their own business, blissfully unaware of what is about to occur. You get a good view down, don't you? Being this far in front of the engines and wing. Look at that. You can see right down below us. That's the Duxford Land Warfare Hall down there. Yeah, it's got tanks and stuff in it. It's pretty good. And that's the M11. With a whole shitload of cars and lorries on it. That's Cambridge over here, and um, that's Cambridge Airfield slash Airport slash whatever. And it does have lights on its runway, so I'm gonna give it a go. Are you eventually make a transatlantic flight. Oh yeah, absolutely. Just the, 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 the trick will be getting a plane that can do it. It'll probably be because I'm, I'm thinking I'm maybe doing something like um, a Lockheed Constellation um, or the A2A B38 Strato Cruiser or whatever, which was a really big, one of Boeing's first really massive um, airliners and it was prop powered with these Pratt & Whitney R28s which were basically 28 cylinder um, piston engines, the most powerful piston engines basically ever built, ever. Um, and A2A did one, and A2A are kind of awesome with their with their aeroplanes and their add-ons and things. So I'm tempted to give that a go. But the Constellation's also really awesome. I've seen a Constellation flying in real life. So, but it, uh, they were both, con you know, they were both capable of doing a transatlantic flight. I think so. All right, here we go. Okay. Where's my gear? Lever. Where's the gear lever? Come on, there we go. Gear down. Uh oh. We may. Okay, we're gonna do a go around. We've completely fucked it up. All right. <laughs> Never mind. We'll keep the gear down for now because that's just one less thing to worry about. Bring up the RPMs. The radio shop is still open, they are good. And again, look at this, because of this amazing domed canopy, I can see all sorts of stuff. I'd dearly love to know why my flaps indicator is not working. Our undercarriage indicator lights, master switch. Where's the switch for the fucking? Hold a second. I have to actually pause this. Flap indicator on, please. Jesus. There we go. Now, if I just right, yeah. If I just use the flaps lever on my joystick, it brings it all the way down, which I don't really want. Ideally right now I actually want a bit of flaps, but not loads. There we go, 15 degrees of flaps for the downwind. There we go, it's the external view. Very cool. And every time you switch view, it bugs out like that. You get a black screen. It's kind of annoying, but whatever. It's 
Steady, steady, yeah. I totally want to do the Dambus just raid in this thing. I absolutely do. I need to climb a bit more. A lot more, in fact. And it's just as well, because this Lancaster add-on does come with a Dambuster version. With the bouncing bomb, so... It's doable, folks. It's very doable. Alright, we're getting a bit of a stall rumble now, which is not good. Oh yeah. Because we're climbing at 100 knots. Ooh. Yikes. Alright. Oh man, that's not good. I can hear the whole plane rumbling because it's on the edge of a stall as I try to do this turn here. Oh man. Okay, gear up. Okay, so that button does my gear, okay. Right, I've just figured out what the joystick button for my gear is. Like, look how much I'm rotating this fucking wheel right now just to stay straight, Jesus. And I'm not, I can't, I'm not even in a remotely in a position to turn on to final. Right, okay, let's just climb out. And we'll come back in from a distance and have another go. Yeah, as Prototype says, what's the worst that could happen? Well, we get a very boring little box saying you crashed. Nothing impressive. So... I wouldn't go egging me on to crash the plane, because it would actually be incredibly boring. So, I mean, this is pretty tricky. God knows what trying to land a 777 or a 737 is going to be like by comparison. Yeah, I'm used to flying fighters, and this is one of the things. This is one of the reasons I'm flying planes like this, because I try and try and get me out of the bad habits I've picked up flying little planes. Because my holding pattern there to try and come back around for a second attempt at landing originally that was way too tight for a plane this size. We needed to come all the way back out here really just to line this up again. And even now, I think I, may, I could have done with another mile or so. But anyway. coming way too fast right now, holy crap. Slow the fuck down, plane, Jesus. Wow, okay, it just doesn't want to go slower than 200 knots all of a sudden. It's like, yippee! Look at that, look at that, it's staying at two fucking hundred knots. Throttle's full idled. Christ alive. Alright. Here we go again. Third time's a charm, I know. I don't know what the safe speed is for lowering the landing gear either. Maybe it'll say on the kneeboard thing. Hold on. Aircraft, kneeboard. Checklist. Maximum speeds in miles per hour IAS. Undercarriage down 200, flaps down 200. So what's that in knots then? Or you like maybe 160 or something? This game does look pretty pretty. Uh, 
pretty pretty. What the fuck are you talking about, Dave? But yeah, it does look nice at night with all the lights, I've got to admit. Especially when you're running it with DirectX 10 like I am. And you can see all, of, all the other aeroplanes out there as well. It's the twinkling lights. Airliners and whatnot. Even before we come in for our final approach and our fucking, you know, Boeing 747 just comes screaming in. Knots is 230, 230 miles per hour. Right, okay. Good to know. It's almost 200 miles per hour, it's probably like 180 knots, maybe? 170 knots? Sounds about right, actually, yeah. So apparently the trick to this thing is going to get it, be getting it to slow down just as much as maintaining my speed on the way in. Because this, this thing like bleeds speed like crazy once I get the gear in flaps down, but it's losing that speed in the first place. It's the devil, really. Okay. But again, look, this is really badass being able to see this back here. See, see the air, airport from here because if I was flying the DC-3 right now or, or the B-17 I wouldn't be able to see that that would just be metal cockpit bits in a way so alright let's start making our turn Try and keep it coordinated. You can hear the wind rumbling against us right now. I'd say one thing for this whole aeroplane add on. Sounds gorgeous. Combined with AccuFeel, anyway. Okay. I'm trying to see, I'm trying to coordinate this turn by turning and also not losing altitude in the process, which is quite tricky because I'm now I'm out losing a lot of altitude oh god all right here we go okay we should probably get the gear down now actually there we go I can hear the hydraulics working turn off the menu bar at the top sorry about that start putting down notches of flaps. Ooh. Yeah. This is kind of terrifying, I'm going to be honest. Alright, full flaps. Like, look at how much I'm moving the controls around right now and you'll get an idea of how tough this fucking is. Plane's listing over to the left. No, come on. Don't do that. Don't do. Duh. Holy fucking shit. Alright, um. I 
not actually technically on the runway anymore. Whew. Well, we're in one piece, but to be honest with you, that's mostly down to the fact that this, this sim doesn't do crash modeling very much. Um, yeah. Christ, am I alive? That is, there's, there's, evidently there's a real art to that, because I totally fluffed that up, even with a really decent looking approach. I wonder, maybe the wind had something to do with it. I mean, maybe I was coming in. I might, I might have had a massive crosswind coming in on that, to be fair, which probably didn't help, but. Christ. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh no, another sand bug. The engine seemed to have decided they're. Uh... There we go. That's better. That, that I really don't like, the, the sound issues. I mean, the sounds themselves sound really nice, but the, uh... Is there a taxiway big enough to take us? I'm thinking probably not, to be honest with you. Well, I guess we'll try this one. Oh, okay, this one's a little wider. This might, might do. But yeah, I mean, imagine doing that fucking landing, right, with, like, two dead engines or something. Plane is shot to shit. Maybe the pilot's even wounded. Coming in. A cloudy night as well. With a crosswind. With two or more of your engines dead. Or on fire, even. Fucking Christ, you know. Oh, here we go with the sound bug again. There we go. Yeah, like the 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 sounds for the are inverted. If you're throttled down really low and you go into the external view and come back, it comes back with high engine sounds. When you've got high throttle and you go external and come back, it comes back with idled sounds. So evidently, there's like a, there's a there's a there's a couple of values somewhere in, in a database file that are the wrong way around. Or a few misnamed sound files. Maybe I can fix that myself, who knows. But it's kind of annoying, I've got to admit. Maybe, maybe there's a patch for it. I don't know if I've got the up, most up-to-date version of this, to be fair. Right, let's park it over here. Next to this Learjet or whatever it is. Slot it in here. Thank Christ, the taxiing is as easy as it is. Because the landing was hard enough by itself without having to use engine thralls and shit to, to taxi. Instead of just using the rudders. Okay, right. Lights on. There we go. Whew. Um, and idle cut off. 
that's engine four off. And I think the order we should do is like this. Outer ones first. There we go, and inner ones. And there we are. Home and dry. <laughs> right, let's get it shut down. Booster coil off. Indicators off. So what's that one? Master switch. No, we'll leave that on for now. Ignition off. Gear indicator off. Uh, what else? Oxygen off. And uh, to the fly engineer's bit. Oh, we should have put. Technically, we should have put the booster pumps on when we were coming into land as well, but I forgot about that. Never mind. Okay, fuel tank selectors um, off. There we go. Avionics off. And light off. And master switch off. There we go. And the lights will stay on because it, I don't know, this is, like I said, the systems modeling isn't quite perfect. Oh, and we've still got our position and navigation lights on. That's interesting. Why is that then? Oh, there we go. There we are. Right. So, yeah. That was interesting. Probably could have, probably could have taxied this in a bit further, but I couldn't see very far over that massive nose, to be honest. It's not a gigantic nose, it's just... Objects in windscreen may be further away than they appear, apparently. Yeah, that we're still like halfway out under the fucking apron, Jesus. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Ugh. Anyway, yeah, that was the Avril Lancaster. I got I bought it today, wanted to try it out properly. I thought I'd stream it while I was at it. Yeah, I like it on the whole. Just um, a few issues here and there. But that's, to be honest with you, I feel like it's a bit to be expected because it's not made by A2A or a PMDG. Or at least it wasn't made very recently. Like That's the thing with a lot of these modules, like this Lancaster, for example. It's actually quite an old, um, in fact, it's a very old add-on. Um, I think it was because it's still compatible with FS two thousand and four, so it's very freaking old. And considering that, it's looking pretty good for its age. So, yeah, the landing was fun. Yeah, that, that's 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 the thing, isn't it? Like, um, and the takeoffs are pretty challenging too, because you just you keep running out of runway. You've got to I've got to really push the stick forward and get the nose down and the tail up on takeoffs. But um. Yeah, the landings um, are tricky. Really freaking tricky. Uh, next time I'll have to do it properly and try and figure out where the wind is and which end we could we should land at and stuff. But um, yeah, I'm now kind of curious to see how the DC three and the um, and the B seventeen handle compared to this because this was a real pig trying to get it down on the ground yeah well to be fair I mean this thing is big and tough enough to land on grass if it wants to um, so that's not really a problem I just for the sake of doing it properly I like to get it down the center line if I can Obviously, didn't compensate enough though for as we were coming in. Now for a seven four seven. Oh God! <laughs> I 
So anyway, yeah, that was pretty cool. I like. I will probably put it in the series. It might not be very long, um, but I'd like to put it in there. I'd like to be able to officially, you know, I'd like to be able to take off and land in this thing properly. And I would like to have a go at the Dam Busters raid. I would. It would be very cool. Um, to, 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 you know, reenact that. Fly all the way to Germany and bomb the dams. Not really bomb them, but, you know, fly at them, um, as they would have done, because you don't get weapons in this game. It's not modelled. Um, but we can fly the we can fly the bouncing bomb version of the Lancaster though, so just for added authenticity. So yeah, um, right, flights, end flight. So yeah, as you can see, I've got I bought the Lancaster, and the, this is what you actually get for it. You get all of these, all of these here. Um, so this one here is the one we just flew. We also get, say, this one here, this Canadian one. Um, what is it again? Um, number 107, Rescue Unit, Royal Canadian Air Force Torbay. So there you go. So that's probably a post-war jobby. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's got some very advanced looking radar in the bottom there, so it doesn't have a dorsal turret either. Been removed. Um, so there's that. There's this one, number 44, Rhodesia Squadron. Which has just different markings, pretty much. Um, number 166 Squadron. Which, again, has different markings. I think it's from a Pathfinder Squadron or something. That's why it's got yellow markings on it. These guys were flying ahead of the main group and they dropped like incendiary bombs on target so they'd light it up and start a firestorm. So they could guide all the other bombers in and give them something to aim at. And then you got this, which is... Yeah, Royal Egyptian Air Force, circa 1952. So during the Suez Crisis, basically. Or, no, not quite. That was 56, but anyway. Yeah. An Egyptian Lancaster. <laughs> And what's this? Avro Lancaster B1 Special, yeah. Number 617 Squadron, RF Woodhall, 1945. Which is a very weird looking one, look at that. Equipped with the Grand Slam bomb. Which is massive! It's like a huge earthquake bomb, sort of bunker busting jobby. Um, insane, look at that thing. And obviously in daylight camouflage as well, because it's 1945 and they'd actually started flying in daylight at that point because it was safe enough. Um, there you go. And then there's a B3 which we just flew. And there's this B3 Empire Central Flying, yeah, Empire Central Flying School, circa 1945, which has yellow bits on it because it's a training plane, technically. And special. Ah, this is it. 617 Squadron with Barnes Wallace's bouncing bomb attached underneath it. So if we do a Dam Buster raid reenactment, this is the one we'll use. Looks pretty cool. I wonder what effect it'll have on the actual plane handling and stuff. It'd be interesting to know. Uh, what else is there? Avril Lancaster B10, one four no four one nine Squadron, RCAF. Yeah, this is a later one. It's got the radar on the bottom there. Some nifty shark teeth on the on the engine bits. What's it got on the front there? Ropsy or something. Cool. And Avro Lancaster MR3 School of Maritime Reconnaissance RAF St. Mag Magan. Circa 1956. So there you go. That's a, that's a naval reconnaissance jobby from the 50s. So anyway, yeah. Pretty neat.
<laughs> yeah, correction, when we do a Dam Buster reenactment, not a, not if. Come on, Dave, 747. I don't have a 747, mate. I can't do it, because I don't have a 747. So, even if I wanted to. So, yeah, um... What other planes have I got? I got the Comanche, which we've already flown. Um, I got the Vulcan from Iris, and they, that gives you all of these fucking Vulcans, like loads of them. I, I don't know what half of them are about, but all I know is there's XH558, which is the one that's still flying. Um, there's XM597, which is the one that took part in the Black Buck raid during the Falklands War. And there's a bunch of these white ones, which I think are equipped with nuclear bombs. Um, they either have blue streak missiles or um, yellow sun nuclear bombs. So, play Oblivion modded. No! No! No, 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 no! Fuck off. In no uncertain terms. I'm flying planes tonight. If you can't deal with that, then get lost. That's the simple blunt truth. Don't be offended, that's just the way it is. And that's a Vulcan, that's what it looks like. Also made by Avro, in fact it's made by the same design team that made the Lancaster, except it's a supersonic nuclear bomber. And it's fucking awesome. It's my favourite jet plane ever. It's huge. They're gigantic, these things. See that tiny cockpit up at the front there? Yeah. The Tin Triangle, they called it. That was its nickname. Pretty awesome plane. Concorde was kind of loosely based off this, actually, so... Yeah, I wonder what these guys look like. Yeah, so this is, this is one painted up as a nuclear bomber because it's in anti-flash white. You see... Which makes it look a little bit like a space shuttle, admittedly, but yeah. Oh yeah, there you go, look, it's got a blue streak missile. So it's got a nuclear missile underneath it. There you go. Fucking hell, look at that thing, it's huge. Do you have the B2 spirit? No. Um, what else? Yeah, I've got the B17, which comes with four versions. Here it is. Isn't it gorgeous? This is an A2A1, so it's just as detailed as the um, the Spitfire I've got and the um, Comanche. So this one's going to be a real challenge. But yeah, it's pretty. And what else? Uh, I've got two versions of the Mosquito, neither of which are that good, to be honest with you. There's this one, which, these ones that say DG Designs, those, these ones were freeware, these were free. Um, and they're visually quite nice, it's just they're missing loads of stuff, and the flight model for it is non-existent. You know, it just doesn't fly like a Mosquito at all. Um, but it's free, so, you know, what more can you ask for, really? It has better engine noises than the other one though, and this is the other one here, um, which is the Just Flight Mosquito, which again, I think it's a very old module, I think that's most of what, mostly what it comes down to, it's just very old. Um, and again, this one doesn't fly particularly amazingly, and uh, it kind of looks a bit ugly on the inside as well. But I don't know, it, I, I can't really make my mind up with it. Uh, the engine sounds for it are awful as well. And it has the same um, sound bug as the Lancaster, come to think of it. But I don't know, I might include it just because it's a nice transition between something like the Spitfire and um, the DC-3. Because it's it's got two engines, but it's small, you know. Plus there's some cool missions you can do with this as well. Like you can do the Norway Gestapo bombing raid and stuff like that. But anyway... And what else? Ah, yeah, the DC-3. A whole bunch of different versions of it. it, it it's technically the DC-3 and the C-47, because it's the same plane. Um, do, 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 do. 
civilian versions, which is, as you can see, the DC-3 here. So, like, you've got this post-war Lufthansa DC-3. And you've got military ones. There's a... Oh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? There's this amazing, friggin' ridiculous one. Uh, oh, I don't know if I've got it or not now. Kind of wondering. Maybe I don't have it. Ah, oh, there's a Vietnam one which has like miniguns pointing out the side of it as like an impromptu gunship. It's the most ridiculous thing you've ever seen. Um, is it anywhere here? No, it's not. Okay, well, never mind. And then, yeah, you've got like an RAF version um, of the C-47 and an American version. Which does look pretty cool, I've got to admit. <laughs> Which one could do the Kessler run in less than three in less than twelve park six? <laughs> Probably the Vulcan, to be honest with you. I think it's the fastest one I've got. Um To be fair, the Vulcan fucking reminds me of the Millennium Falcon, actually. But anyway. Um, yeah, a bunch of crappy default planes as well, and where is it? The Spitfire! There you go, we got a Mark 1 version and a Mark 2 and a Mark 2B, all of which are very nice. And there's more I want to get besides, so. Did you see a Grimm and Goose? Yeah, it's one of the default planes. Um, mm, looks okay, I guess, but um, all the default planes are just dreadful, to be honest with you, so I've not even tried it, really. I should maybe look around and see if there's a... Uh, See if there's a, an updated, better payware version of the Grim and Goose, because it's a cool, cool looking plane. I don't do enough stuff with flying boats, so. I want to get a Twin Otter which is an amazingly cool little plane which has propeller blades that can go in reverse so it can land in really short distances and you can put skis on it and you can put floats on it so it can land on water it's nuts and I want to get basically I want to get that and I want to get the Antarctica add-on by Aerosoft so I can do like a whole South Pole expedition in it should be kind of awesome are there any good BF 109s available? I don't know actually. There might be. I haven't looked around much to be honest with you. E two A haven't done one. I know that much. And those guys are kind of the king of prop planes. They just every every prop prop plane they do is just all unbelievably realistic. They've done the Spitfire. They've done the P forty seven. They've done the P forty. They've done the P fifty one. Um, what else? I'm not sure, but anyway, yeah, they're really great. A to A. Is there a plane capable of going underwater? Well, there was that flying car from one of the James Bond films, but... <laughs> I can't think of anything off the top of my head. Get a B-29 and fly into Lake Mead. Ugh. Ugh. So amusing as that is, like I said, there's no crash modelling in this. So, 
you'd, you'd fly at Lake Mead and you'd reach Lake Mead and then it would just come up with a box saying you crashed and then you'd have to exit. Anything VTOL? Uh, that's an interesting idea, actually. I wonder if there is a Harrier. I mean, there probably is, but the ch question is, if it, is it any good? Because the Harrier is awesome. There's actually a new sim some guys have got on Kickstarter. They want to base around the, the Harrier, which looks kind of interesting. Um, let me minimize this for now. Let's see if I can find it. Combat Air Patrol 2, that was it. Yeah, these, these, these guys. They're doing a Harrier sim. Which looks kind of interesting. Because I like the Harrier. I'm not into a lot of modern-ish fighter jets, but the Harrier's kind of a badass little plane. So... Although for some fucking reason they decided they'd go, they'd do it Battle of Hormuz in the Persian Gulf, um, instead of doing a fucking Falklands War Harrier thing, which would actually be fun. But never mind. Maybe they'll do an expansion for the Falklands, that'd be pretty badass. Shoot down some Argentinians. But yeah, that looks interesting. I haven't backed it, to be honest with you, because I can't afford to at the minute, but I'm thinking about it. How much are they... How are they doing? Oh, God, they're doing horribly, though. Look at that. Three three grand of their 70,000 goal. With four days to go. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, that's probably not going to happen. <laughs> or at least it won't happen for a long time. Anyway, uh, yeah, well, let's see. FSX Harrier. Okay, there's more than more than one apparently. There's quite a few. Holy ENB glowy effects, Batman! Jesus Christ. Apparently this guy has so much bloom lighting, it looks like he's, you know, glasses have fogged up. But no, no, there you go, there's a Harrier for FSX. I honestly can't tell just by looking at it if it's any good, but... It seems to have an entire video, three minute video devoted to startup, which would, would, would in theory indicate that at least the, the systems are modelled quite well. Oh, look at that, he's doing the vertical takeoff. That's awesome. Ha! Huh. I'll go back a bit. There we go. Right. Thank for watching. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Thank for watching, guys. Um, still, that was, that's pretty cool, actually. Thank for watching. Class. <laughs> Yeah.
Yeah, English probably isn't their first language, to be fair. But I, I don't know. It still, still makes me giggle. Um, and you're just trying to land on Loch Ness with an amphibious plane. That'd be quite fun, actually. Yeah, best outro ever. Still, that looked pretty cool. Actually, that really did. As Bam Harrier GR7 dash GR9. Fly it now! It's probably expensive, isn't it? Hmm. It's really difficult to gauge like how good any of these things are until you've actually tried them out yourself. Note, FSX version requires acceleration. What the fuck's that? It's probably some other add-on, isn't it? Uh -huh. AV8B Harrier 2 Plus. That's the American one, isn't it? Yeah. It's the modern American version. Ooh, they did a Sky Raider. That's kind of cool. Apparently, although I can't seem to get to it. It just redirects me to the Harrier page. Well, that's weird. But yeah, their, their website's been kind of weird. Well, anyway, yeah, uh, that's kind of neat. It doesn't seem to tell you anywhere, though, where how much it costs, does it? Unless it's free, I highly doubt that, but... You can get the, the user's manual for it, but... Razabam, your, your website's weird. Uh, whoops. There we go. Anyway. Oh, you're from Finland, Jay. Oh, fair enough. In my experience, Finns seem to be really, really good at English, actually. I've, I've met and spoken to quite a few, and they always have really good accents and everything. I may be generalising just a tad there, but still. A bit like Dutch people. They speak bloody good English, too. Yeah, that's the thing, prototype. That that's exactly the thing with FSX, isn't it? Really, you just you, you spend you very very quickly spend a ridiculous amount of money on it. But it just comes with the territory, really. I mean, it's the, it's a kind of the kind of flight sim that's aimed at people in their thirties and forties who have got lots of disposable income. So, whereas the average, you know average younger PC gamer would say would be like one plane for 30 quid fuck off let alone one plane for 60 quid which is what you pay for with PMDG's um, Boeing's they're like 60 70 quid each worth every penny in my honest opinion but still a lot of people would be like what the fuck's that about but you gotta remember, you, you're not really, you're not paying for just a plane. You're playing for like a, you're paying for a fucking full-on simulator that you can use to train yourself to fly actual seven three sevens, and that's what that's what people use them for. You know, you get people, you you get pro pilots who are who are studying to fly airliners. They they buy these products and they actually train with them. So still enjoying the cloud. Yes, very nice. Um, 
Bum, bum. Then you have the Skyrim users, yes, on the other hand, exactly, Cole. <laughs> who are just, who are asked to pay like two dollars for a UI mod and they just flip their shit. Because that's what that's what FSX really is just a, it's just a modding platform. That's what you do. You you go on Steam, you know. You go on Steam, and the the store page lags out because it's Steam, and that's what it does. And you ignore all the DLC for this, by the way. Don't touch them. Um, Edition. Can I can I actually get the game and not the DLC? Fucking Christ! All right, well whatever. We'll click on this for now. Anyway, yeah, you go on here and you get it on a sale for like three ninety nine, which is what I did. I that when I got Microsoft Flight Simulator X, it was on sale for three quid. Um, and that's why I paid for it. I got three quid on this, and then just bought a bunch of a bunch of add-ons and expansions for it and things. Well, that's the thing, fat ass, <laughs> great, great name, um, that's the thing, like, you pay maybe 30 quid for a plane add-on for FSX, but the quality of them usually is just amazing, way, way, you know, far and above beyond what you'd, what you'd get from the average Skyrim mod, on the other hand, for example, so, I mean, there are whole companies set up that make add-ons for Flight Simulator 10 and X-Plane, that's all they do. You know, and they make a they make a, a living off it. So, anyway, um, what shall I do now? Wish FSX had better ground graphics. It has pretty good ground graphics, to be honest with you. Um. It just depends on what graphic settings you put it on and if you get ground scenery add-ons, basically. Because the default, the default ground graphics for, for FSX are fucking dreadful. They are the ugliest shit you have ever seen. But if you get, like, what I've done, where you get... Where is it? Orbex FTX Global. FTX Global. There, you get this, which totally retextures the entire planet Earth, basically, so that it looks like this instead. And that's what I have. I have that, and I have Orbex England installed on top of it to add more detail to England, specifically. Um, yeah, from a game from 2006, it's, it's looking pretty good, you've got to admit. Um, so, yeah. There you go, there's Norway, Santa Barbara, California, Paderborn, Germany, France, Norway again, Copenhagen, Sri Lanka, Himalayas, man I want to fly over the Himalayas, that'd be so badass, be so freaking cool, in a little twin otter, just flying over the Himalayas. Or trying to land in a in a valley somewhere or something with the skis on, Colombo, L.A., Copenhagen again, Japan, and so on and so on. So you know, and and this is not exactly cheap, FTX Global, from what I recall. Um. And look, you see, you get FTX Global and you can install additional things on there, like different airports and things. Um, if I go buy now, let's see how much it costs. I've already bought this, this is what I have, but, um, yikes, yeah, well, no, nah, it's Australian dollars, so that might as well be Monopoly money. Let's have a look in the UK pounds. Yeah, 45 quid for that, for a basically a high-detail re 
rejigging of the entirety of planet Earth, and you know, for me that was worth it. And this this screenshot here is my desktop background. This this was using FTX Global as well with my reduced graphic settings because my PC is not quite up to it. But this was me flying through a Scottish Glen in the Highlands, um, in my Comanche. So and it looks like a Scottish Glen in the Highlands. What can I say? You know that's it's spot on. So. They even had Edinburgh Stadium in Edinburgh when I flew over it. That was ridiculous. And Edinburgh Bridge as well. And that was without adding, like, Orbex Scotland on top of it or anything like that. It was just, they just had it there. So, yeah. Uh... So yeah, you kind of get what you pay for with this game. You know, it's expensive, but it looks gorgeous. And that's the thing. You've got the entirety of planet Earth. It's not just like something like, like a game like Cliffs of Dover where you've got a little bit of the English Channel to play with and that's your lot. No, you get the whole fucking planet. North Pole to South Pole. The whole lot. Everything in between. One-to-one -one scale as well. It's not scaled down or anything. It's on one-to-one -one scale. So... Loch Ness. <laughs> Air traffic laws. Air traffic laws are annoying in Scotland, actually, because about half of the highlands... Right, are, yeah, I'll show you. Um, boom, 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 where is it? There's Plan G. There you go, right. So, here's Scotland, right? And Scotland's a pain in the dick because it is covered in restricted air zones. All these red ones are danger zones. God knows why, probably because they're being used by the Air Force or the Navy as firing ranges. So, um, yeah, there's that. And then you've got these orange zones here, restricted, see here, as if... Oh, God, all my windows are on the wrong side of the screen. I do apologise. There we go. That's better. Now you can actually see what I'm pointing at, probably. Um, like here, for example, this area is restricted because it's a glider area. That's where gliders fly around. Um... And this is glider area, that's a glider area, and then you've got this restricted FS SFC, which means surface, to 5,000 feet, the highlands. So basically, you're not allowed to fly lower than 5,000 feet anywhere in the highlands, in real life. Of course, you can do whatever the fuck you want in FSX, because, you know, it's up to you, but, yeah, in real life, you can't go below 5,000 feet. Um... And in this bit of the highlands here, you can't go below 2,000, and the same goes for down there. So, and then you've got these areas up here, which are red boxes that are not filled in. That's 25,000 feet to 55,000 feet, which is another danger area for some reason. Because um, at the minute, right, and this is probably what we'll do later, if I can be asked, is if you remember a couple of night, a few nights ago where I was doing my stream, where we came up from, oh god, the lag, let me just turn off the... Um, View data map. There we go. Turn off the additional airspace crap. We went from and this, please. There we go. We we came from Duxford down in Cambridge. Here we flew all the way from there up to Kingston Point Hull, which is where we did that little mishap where we landed here at Leckenfield by accident, thinking it was Linley Hill. It wasn't. Then we, then we landed at Lindley Hill afterwards. And then in between now and then, what I did was I took off from Lindley Hill again, and I flew over to York, just to see York from the air. Then I flew back up here to Flamborough NDB, and carried on up the coast until I got to... Where was it? Uh, da -da 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 -da. Zoom in a bit. Yeah, I got to Whitby, and this is where I did that channel update video, because there's Robin Hood's Bay, you can see there. Um, and then I flew up there and I landed up here at Newcastle Airport. And then I took off from there and I flew all the way up here to Edinburgh, past Edinburgh, up north here. Um, all the way up past this, flew around in some of the glens down here for a bit. And then landed up here at Aberdeen, and right now I'm at Aberdeen, which is 
not there, it's it's here, that's the VOR, but we're at Aberdeen here uh, at the moment. And my next plan flight, which I've already planned out here in Plan G, was to fly up here to the Kinnard's Head NDB, then along the coast here to Kinloss. And then Inverness, and then north up here to Wick, or sorry, Duncansby Head, and then uh, go and land at Kirkwall in uh, the Orkneys. And then my next flight would probably be I'd be going up to the Shetlands, fly over the Shetlands, and then back again probably. Or if I'm feeling really adventurous, go fly land at the Shetlands, refuel, and then try and fly all the way up, up, up here to um, whatever the fuck this place is. I can't remember now. Um, it's that, I think it's technically part of Iceland. I'm not sure though. But yeah, fly up there. And then I'd carry on around here, go to Stornoway, um, and then down here, so on and so on. Then down around the Irish Sea, and, you know, Manchester and Liverpool, and then around Wales, Anglesey. All that sort of shit, down to Cornwall, all the way back, back around here along the southern coast, which I've seen a million times because I've played Cliffs of Dover, and then back up to uh, Duxford, and that'd be my little tour of the UK complete, so. But yeah, that was the plan. Just move this shirt back over here. Really should have just used the other monitor command thingy in OBS, but never mind. See, I can do this, and ta da, you can see my second monitor. Anyway. Sex would be nice with an Oculus Rift. It would, wouldn't it? I, d I don't, don't know if it supports it or not, though. It's kind of old, you know. I bet X-Plane does, though. X-Plane is another sim like FSX, except it's newer, and it's a 64-bit uh, program, so it runs much better. Um, but I haven't got it yet, because X-Plane is incredibly expensive, and it, I, it doesn't have quite as many cool add-ons for it. Faroe Islands, that was it. I couldn't quite remember. They're actually Danish, are they? All oh, right, that's oh, fine. It's, it's all Viking territory, isn't it? It's stuff that the Vikings settled on, basically. Tell you what, though, Iceland would be pretty cool to fly over, with all this volcanic stuff. You don't know. You don't happen to have one of those nifty Twitch chat windows next to you so you can keep track of us all here, do you? Um... Yeah, I'm reading it right now. What I should do, actually, come to think of it, what I should do is I should get my tablet and put the Twitch chat on my tablet. Oh, you mean on the screen? Yeah, no, I, I got rid of that. Well, two reasons. One, because it meant that if I'd ignored someone, they knew I'd ignored them and they'd just come back making alt accounts. And the other reason was just because, um, well, it, it made the screen smaller, um... Because to be honest with you, because I've watched Twitch VODs and stuff before myself. I do quite often, actually. Um, and, well, basically, it just kind of annoys me. I don't really want to re read the Twitch chat for, other, for, for when, I'm, when I'm watching a stream VOD. I just want to watch the stream VOD, you know? So I don't really want to have a third of the screen taken up by Twitch chat. So I figured, you know, why bother anymore? Because it just means the video gets smaller and that's a bit shitty, really. Why not Finland? We have cool forests and more for yeah, yeah, well, you know. Scandinavia would be a good one. Do a bit of cold weather flying. Try and get up to Svalbard, that'd be awesome. But yeah, anyway, where's that? Where's that? Oh man. Um Aerosoft Aerosoft Antarctica. Here we go. This is what I want. I want to get this. It's 27 euros. Well, 28 if you want the download version, which I obviously do. Um, but it's the whole of Antarctica, the continent of Antarctica, which, by the way, it, the South Pole is massive. Like, people don't realise it, but it's huge. It's a massive continent. No, here's, here's a map of it. It's gigantic, but anyway, yeah. And then you got this is this add-on basically, which does Antarctica, and it adds all the all the little weather stations and shit like Ohigan Skiway and 
Halley Station Ski Way and Sky Blue Runway and Fossil Bluff Ski Way, you know, it's so cool. And that they're all they're all like owned by different countries around the world as well. It's like, I love how every every single fucking place place in the world has got like has, has has stuck their flag in the ground. Even China, look at that! Like they've stuck their flag in the ground and they decide they're going to have a chunk of Antarctica to themselves. And Sweden, look, South Africa, Japan, Chile, and Argentina. But to be fair, they're they're pretty close by actually. So. I mean, there's Argentina right there, for reference, you know. That's Argentina. And those are the Falklands Islands, so. But I mean, those, that tiny little, those two tiny little blobs, right, those are the Falklands Islands, for reference, okay? This is just how big Antarctica is, right? Look at them on there. Now, let me get a world map up. Um, in fact, let me get Plan G up for you. Um, monitor 2, here we go. Right, now, let me show you. The Falkland Islands, the Falklands Islands on here. They're kind of big looking, as islands go. If you compare them to somewhere like Ascension Island, all the way up here, or whatever the hell this is, this is an Ascension Island. Ascension Island's down here somewhere. Yeah, here we go. Like Jamestown, George, where the yeah Ascension. There you go. That's Ascension Island. Tiny. Falklands, significantly bigger. Okay. Kind of, kind of bigger, but then. Look at this. Look how fucking gigantic this is. Holy fucking shit. Like, look at the size of Antarctica on this map and compare it with the rest of the world. Damn. You know? It's massive. In terms of pure landmass, it's gigantic. So. You could make an entire series on YouTube just doing a South Pole. Expedition. And nothing but. Just <laughs> geography with Dave. Herpity derp. Anyway, yeah, but I'd like I'd love to get this. I think it'd be really cool. Seems to have got lots of good reviews as well. And also, these guys do um, a plane that goes with it really nicely, which is a uh, twin otter extended. Here we go, the twin otter extended. Which is, that's a crap screenshot. There we go, that's a bit better. This plane here. Which, as I said, you can put skis on and you can put floats on to land on water and shit. So I'd love to get that, and I'd and and the Antarctica add-on. On top of it, you know, that'd be great. That'd be a really cool combo. But anyway, yeah. Of course, I'd have to learn how to fly the fucking thing, which would take forever. In my experience, so. So we can go fishing for Nessie. <laughs> well, I, I I have to I have to be quite quite serious here, guys. It's not it's not like I can buy this now, download it, and we can do it on the stream. I I would actually have to spend like probably a couple of weeks trying to learn it properly. So um, it's you know. Be my geography teacher. Honest to God, the best geography teacher I ever had was. Paradox Interactive's Hearts of Iron and um, Europa Universalis games. <laughs> totally, to be honest with you. <laughs> Countless hours of playing fucking Hearts of Iron 2, that's basically where I owe my geographical knowledge to. 
Turns out if you stare at a map of the world long enough and try and conquer it, you, 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 you sort of subliminally learn everything there is to know about it. Um, there's a mod in Victoria 2 which has decisions that lead to totalitarianism if you're a dictatorship and the description just are filled with hilarious supreme leader praises and <laughs> nice <laughs> Victoria, oh man I played the original Victoria quite a lot I wasn't very good at it to be honest with you but I played it quite a lot I never really got into Victoria 2 I don't really know why I just don't think I had the patience at the time to, to learn it go to Las Vegas I would actually like to one of the things I'd like to do with at least one of the aeroplanes if I do this FSX series or you know whatever um, is I'd like I'd like to actually take off in Vegas and fly over a lot of the locations from Fallout New Vegas because most of them are real you know like Prim and Good Springs and uh, all that sort of stuff and Nipton and Boulder City they're all real places you know so it'd be quite fun to fly over them in a video and see what they look like in real life you know Do it, do it now. I've been meaning to unblock you from YouTube for ages, man. Sticker, come to think of it. <laughs> I'm really sorry, I keep forgetting. Um, I'll tell you what, mate, I'll do it right now. Hold on. It may, may take a moment. My, my list of blocked users is quite large. Um, and for that matter, how the hell will I find it? Create a studio. Community. <laughs> Comments. Likely spam. 1,011. <laughs> yep, sounds about right. Um... Um, let's see. Oh, come on. Messages, community settings, maybe? Is it in here? Ah, here we go. Now to go through and try and find you. There you are. Uh, hopefully that might have done it. Uh, let me just hit save. It's not blocked users anymore though. It says here they're hidden users. Comments from these users won't be shown. You know. Fucking Google Plus, thank for that. You used to be able to just flat out ban people, but now it's just hidden comments. Um, and there's all sorts of silly loopholes that can be exploited. So. Yeah, I was doing it on the other monitor, Irish. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to show you all the intimate details of my YouTube channel settings. Sorry.
play KSP someday. Make your own planes. Yeah, I, I used to play Kerbal Space Program quite a lot. I haven't played it since before it was um, officially released. Um, I should. I really should. There's so many different things I need to do and kind of not getting around to them. Like I want to play more FSX. At some point I should get around to buying X-Plane. I need to play Elite as well. Um, I need to do KSP. You play space sims not much to be to be honest ksp is probably the closest i've ever got to it what you might call a sp space sim um do you still play red orchestra too no not really i suck at it too much <laughs> Ever played Mountain Blade? Yeah, almost to death. It comes in stints. Um, I play Mountain Blade obsessively for about a week and then I never touch it again for maybe a year or more. Any interest in armor? I've given it a go. I've really tried to give armor a go as much as I could, but I never really could quite get into it. I, I, I don't like inf being an infantryman. That's, that's the thing. Um, I, <laughs> it's really not my bag. Running around with a rifle in in woods and and mud and stuff, it just you know I, all I do is run along and then just get shot by someone half a kilometer away. I didn't see, uh, you know, rinse and repeat. It just it didn't it it wasn't fun. I even tried playing it with a group and it still wasn't fun. Plus, people people in armor take shit a little too seriously for my liking. I've got to be honest with you. Even like the hardcore of the hardcore of the nerdiest. Flight sim people know how to have a laugh every now and again. Armor people don't. They're strange. Not obviously, I'm generalizing a bit, but I, I think you, if anyone here is watching who does play armor, I think you know exactly the sort of people I'm talking about. Hmm. Ugh. Anyway, I'm going to have a quick break. I'm going to go for a piss, if you must ask, and maybe get a slice of cake. Baked, baked a, a golden syrup cake the other day, and it's the best thing ever. It kind of exploded slightly in the oven, but it still tastes good. But yeah, I'm going to go do that, and I'll be back in five to ten minutes, and then we will... I'm probably going to continue my little tour of Scotland I've got going on. Where's Plan G run off to? There it is. I will continue this flight that should be on your screens. No, oh, there you go. I'll be doing that. We'll be flying to the Orkney Islands. Flying. We'll be going from Aberdeen up to Orkney, and we'll be going through all this so through here. But as I said, you've got all this airspace around here that is going to make it kind of like threading the eye of a needle, really. <laughs> because um, you've got this big danger area down here which we've got to try and get around one way or another because um, you'll see my waypoints lead straight through it um, so I don't know how I'm going to do that I might have to go climb above 2000 and go over this bit of the highland and then go through this little Death Star trench run area here and then back out here past these two obstacles um, and then head around here off to um, Wick and then we can head up to Orkney. Cause I wanna try and I wanna try and keep it as um kosher as possible when it comes to air traffic control stuff because part one of the reasons for me playing FSX is to learn this stuff so I can do it for real. Um so yeah. We shall see. Anyway. Yeah, I'm going to bugger off and I'll be back in a bit. So, 
TTFN folks. Just minimize that so I can see your lovely chat box again. I did get your donation, Aiden, and thanks very much. Thanks all for the old chap to quote that bloke who crashed into the greenhouse in Battle of Britain. Um, much appreciated. You're a righteous dude. Longest flight you've done on FSX. That will be the longest flight I've ever done on FSX. This this Scotland one, it's... Um, according to this, the whole thing is 190 nautical miles, but it'll probably be more than that because we'll be wobbling and wiggling around and going not entirely as the crow flies. So it'll be quite long. But we've got the fuel for it because we learned last time we were on here that even when I fucked up and landed at the wrong airfield, this thing has shit tons of fuel. It can go on forever and ever and ever. So... Sorry, I wrong monitor. This thing has shit tons of fuel that can go on forever and ever and ever. It's a really, for a tiny little plane, it's got some serious range on it. Someone challenged me a little while ago to see if I could fly from England to Oslo in Norway on with with this plane, and I'm, at some point I'd, I wouldn't mind giving it a go. I reckon you might just be able to do it. Hey, I blocked your country. Yeah, well, don't worry about it for now. I'm gonna. I I, I think I've got. Patreon sort of kind of mostly sorted to tell you the truth I basically just you know I looked up this W8BEN form I had to sign and basically all the guides for it on the internet say that you should leave the tax ID number blank now you can't do that on Patreon because it's a digital form so if you don't fill out the box it doesn't let you finish the form so what I did was I just put United Kingdom in the box I just literally wrote United Kingdom where it said tax ID number and I pressed OK and it seemed to accept it. So I guess we're good. Only one way to find out, which is to set up Patreon and see if I can actually get the funds from it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I, I see what you mean, Cole. I mean... <laughs> give you money to me and then I can forward it to Dave um, but yeah I uh, I do want to get Patreon set up just because it's such a better format than just putting up a PayPal thing because I can actually give people rewards and give them access to things and you know it's just way better organised if you see what I mean so you know anyway No, you were right, Cole. Um, I probably wouldn't want a $5 plane on Steam, to, to be honest with you. They're, all the ones on Steam are basically rubbish, so don't worry about it. Pa Patreon takes a little bit of the cut, a bit of a cut, yeah. A little bit, but not much. PayPal does too, though, to be fair, so, you know. Anyway, yeah, okay, I do, do need to go take a break now, and I will be back, okay, like I said, five to ten minutes, um, or thereabouts, so yeah, BRB, folks.
And we're back. Oh wait, no, sorry, that's that other bloke's catchphrase. Damn it. Uh, okay. So. Right. Um. Oh yeah, I really do need to get the Twitch chat on my Kindle, don't I? Or something. Anyway. This is the plan. We start off at Aberdeen. We take off. We head north to towards the uh, Kinhead Head NDB. Then along the coast, west, past Lossiemouth and Kinloss, and down to Inverness. And then we either go left over here and climb up to 2000 to get over this bit, or we go right out into the sea. I'd rather go here, to be honest with you, because I'd like to see some of the nice scenery, since I've paid so much money for it. So I'll probably go up here, past, past Bona Bridge, Ugh, Scotland. Um, and then we'll go up here, and I think we'll just have to remember to climb up to 2000 again. To get past this bit here, and then we should be good, and we'll just go straight into uh, Wick or, or um, Duncan's Behead. We'll tune into one of those two MB NDBs there. And then we'll make a short hop across to Orkney, and we'll land here at Kirkwall. Simples, as they say. God knows what the weather's going to be like. So, anyway. That's the plan. That's the plan. You guys have officially been briefed. I'm not going to bother with that active, uh, active Sky Next or anything. This is all fine. It's set to force historical time to sim time, so all I've got to do is set the time and day we're flying in the sim itself, and Active Sky Next will sort all of its shit out by itself, which is great. So... Bring this back up if we can. Oh no, okay. FSX has decided it's going to be glitchy and weird. Okay, whatever. What else is new, eh? Could I, if it could actually. Cl oh, don't make me bring in the task manager. Fucking Christ! All right. End task. Thank you. Now I need to wait for a minute or two because it gets shirty with me and is all like, oh, Steam just goes berserk. It's like, no, dude, the game's already running, even though it's not. Oh, you've got the break screen on. Yes, fail, 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 fail. Wonderful. Anyway, I'm a devil. The problem was when I brought that up, I couldn't see the Twitch chat either, so. God damn it. Alright, here you go. Once more, with feeling. Aberdeen. Then up to. Uh, wherever the fuck this is. Kinnaird's Head. Then down here to Kinloss. Then to Inverness. And then. Up here, and I know what what we'll do is we'll we'll just fly without instruments. Basically, we'll go up this way, climb to two thousand to get over this little bump of ATC bit. Up here, through this way, um, climb up to two thousand again to get over this bit, and then we'll go up to Kirkwall in Orkney and we'll land. That's the plan. Um, I can declutter the entire map if necessary to make it a little easier to read. There you go. That's what it looks like, in the broadest, abstractest, most sense. So there you go. And I will move this over to the other screen. Minimize it. See, so yeah, again, this is why it's what I'm saying. I need to get I need to get a tablet with the Twitch chat on, really, just so I can see you guys still talking. Even when my monitors are covered up with stuff. So. Right, let's run FSA. Oh crap, yeah, I need to close down Game Companion. That's what's causing it to bug out. Right, exit that. No, we had buggy scripts, fuck you. Reflight. Uh, load. Command G. <coughs> Excuse me. Jesus. Final destination is uh, Kirkwall Aerodrome in um, Orkney. 
And then the next flight, next time, will be up to the Shetlands, and possibly from the Shetlands to the Faroe Islands, if I'm feeling brave. But, I don't know. And once you get north past Orkney and, and the Shetlands and up towards the Faroe Islands, you get into, like, mega dangerous, like, Atlantic Ocean mega nasty storm territory so I don't know if I want to be flying through that kind of territory in a dinky little Piper Comanche um, it sounds terrifying frankly, it's something you certainly wouldn't want to do in real life Echo Golf Papa Delta oh, and Airport information what Quip. the fuck, shut up Active Sky next my radio is not even turned on, Jesus Anyway, <laughs> oh, you're drunk, active sky. Go home. All right, let me just recenter track AR and pause track AR because I don't need it right now. Anyway, yeah, here I'm Aberdeen. Uh, what time is it? Eight twenty-two a.m. Hold on. Uh, world time and season reset. Um, 28th and local time we will make it um, 10 o'clock in the morning why not there we go I'll just reload now there we go okay now we're back at Aberdeen on the correct day and as you can see the, the planes have evidently changed oh there's a Pacifica Airlines something over there What's that about then? It's a Pacifica Airlines jet of some description. I don't know what jet it is. Um, but anyway. What would a Pacifica Airlines jet be doing in Scotland? In Aberdeen, no less. Whatever. I'm not going to question it. Okay. So. Checklist time. Let's try and make this as snappy as possible. It's a CRJ, is it? I thought it might be something of that nature. I couldn't remember if it's just is, that a, is it a Bombardier CRJ? Is that it's Canadian, isn't it? I think. Anyway, um, right. Control wheel. Remove bungee cord lock. Done. Master switch on and you can actually hear the electrics working oh man I've missed the Lancaster was fun but I've missed having a plane whose systems work properly okay and pito heater on ignition definitely off uh, fuel selectors both on the tanks oh that's a good point have we refueled have I have I fucking refueled? I don't know. Can't think of it. Uh, no is the answer. Right, well we better do that. Let's refuel the tip tanks. We got the pilot, the wrong pilot, and we'll give ourselves roughly a hundred pounds of baggage. We'll top up the oil. Now I don't. I haven't checked the maintenance hangar, and I've not checked it deliberately. Ooh, what's that? Is that a dash eight? Looks a bit too small to be a dash eight. And it's a bit too big to be a twin otter. Anyway. Uh moving on. Where was I? Ah, mixture rich. I wasn't on the list, but never mind. Um, okay, yeah, now we're fueled up and tip tanks. Check that they are full. They are. Flaps extend. Flaps extended. And now we begin the pre flight checks, or the walk around, or whatever you want to call it. Um, outside, no aircraft, right flap. Here we go, okay. I 
think it's I think that's sturdy, isn't it? I remember it originally being a bit it going dun, 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 dun. it was a bit more, you know, rigid. It seems a bit like it's gotten a little floppier. I mean, it looks fairly stable, to be fair, but uh, I wonder if it's one of the aging effects, because these A2A planes, one of the great things about them is that they age. So the longer you have them, the more quirks they get, shall we say. Like, they, 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 I've got about 10 hours on this Comanche right now, so it's starting to show a few signs of wear and tear. Um, right. And... I'm guessing no damage here, no damage, okay, right. Um, aileron. Looks good. Wing tip, tip tank is full and fuel is clear, no contaminants. Right wing's good. Remove wheel shock. Wind tank is good. Fuel is clear. Nose wheel does not appear to be deflated in any way. Propeller is not damaged in any way that I can see. Intakes are clear. 12 quarts of oil. Um, viscosity. I don't know, it's, it might be quite chilly. I don't think of it, it might, might have to. Ah, well, if I wanted to stick in the engine heater, I would, I would have had to do it about an hour ago, so uh, let's forget about it now. Can you reset the wear and tear? Yeah, you can. You can. Um, you can you can reset it whenever you like. I mean, in fact, you can turn the weathering off completely if you want to, but I just like it because I, I like trying to see how... how you know, how long I can get a plane to go for just by running it on the best settings and that sort of thing. Like you would in real life. Just trying to run it as efficiently and smoothly as possible. Just to keep the expenses down, if nothing else. Stall vane is working. Pito heat cover is removed. Pito is hot. Landing light is not smashed. That's fine. That's fine. This looks good. See, that's really floppy on this side, definitely, like compared to the other side. I think, anyway, unless it's my, completely my imagination. It seems to have a lot more give to it than it originally did. Well, anyway. This does not look damaged. That thing, whatever that is, what, what, what were these? Static source opening, yeah, or whatever. What the fuck out? That is, it's unblocked. Okay, trim tabs. No visible damage. A few little bits of wear here and there, but it looks fine. And these look good. And the trim tab is nice and secure. Cargo locked. And we're back in the cabin. Okay, sweet. Right. We're ready to get started. Fuel pump on. Mixture full rich. Throttle slightly cracked. RPM's full. Parking brake is on. Prime it. Ignition on, and away we go. There we go. Got there in the end. Alright, this will take a little while to warm up, so I'm going to get the radios and shit sorted for now. Um, let's, let's see. Cabin heat. Cabin ventilation. How's the cabin at the minute? It's cool, but warming rapidly. Okay, oh, let me turn that down a little tad. What the temperature is it outside? Uh, 59 Fahrenheit plus 15 degrees Celsius. Seems alright for Scotland in the summer. Flaps up. And uh, 
clean out the mixture so we don't foul the plugs and we're looking good autopilot master switch on beacon light doesn't need to be on strobe light doesn't need to be on none of these need to be on we're in the middle of the day so navigation lights don't really need to be on either Okay, radios on, on, and lost. Then the ADF also on. Try and bring the RPM down slightly there. There we go. Um, <coughs> right, I need to get these radios tuned, really. So, I need to bring up Plan G on my other screen. You guys won't be able to see it, although I could probably switch you over if necessary. There you go. I'm looking at, let's see, looking at my list of waypoints here. And we're starting off at Dice here. And um, let's see to find out what the radio frequencies are, okay. Approach, no, ground. Ground is 121.7 megahertz, so... 121.7. That's what we need to put it to. It's already on 121.7, okay, good. So what else do we need? Um, kin loss. Kin loss, kin loss, kin loss. Uh, Kinnard's head. Okay, Kinnard's head, that is 301.5 kilohertz. So that's on the ADF over here. This little thingamajigger. So that is 301.5. Um, so let's be quicker to do it this way, actually. It's 301. Yeah, that should do it. Won't pick up anything yet on this, the ADF beacon marker thing here because we're on the ground and the radio waves can't reach us. Once we take off and climb up to maybe about a thousand feet or so, we'll start getting a signal on the ADF. So, and if we switch it on, maybe we'll get the Morse code beeping. No, not yet. We haven't picked up a signal. Okay, so. <sighs> Nav radios. We want. The first one's going to be kin loss. So that's 109.8. Um, okay, this should be pretty easy. There we go. 109.8. So that will point us to Kin Loss, which is our first VOR, which is different from an NDB. This points us at NDBs, this points us at VORs, and they're both basically different types of radio stations that broadcast radio signals that are used for navigation for pilots using these little devices here, you see. Um, it's pre GPS navigation, basically. Oh, we can always switch the GPS on as well for good measure. Which apparently has no battery. What? Are you fucking kidding me? The GPS battery is modeled? Are you... Are you... What? I'm sorry, is it? What? GPS battery. Have I been leaving the GPS battery on, like... Okay, apparently I needed to put new batteries in the GPS. That's what it was. Okay, fuck me. Jesus. <laughs> I didn't know that was modelled. Jesus Christ. You have to put new batteries in the fucking GPS, just like in real life as well, I guess. Um, fine. Let me bring the RPMs up slightly. Uh, it's still really fucking cold. Look at that. Let's bring it up quite a bit. Let's go 1200 RPM for a faster warm-up. And let me just... Clean this out as much as I possibly can because about that'll do. The leaner the mixture is, the warmer the engine gets. So, because you can see here the cylinder head temperature still way down here, it needs to get into the green zone. So, right. Other radios after kin loss, we have Inverness, which is three to eight kilohertz. That'll be on the ADF, Majiga. So 
three, two, eight. Three, two. Oh, stupid thing. How do I get it to stop? I don't think. Eight, three. No, that's three, three, eight. Fuck's sake! Yeah, there we go. Three, two, eight. Okay, so once we get past Kinloss, I need to switch these over like that, and that'll point us to the, to Inverness. Whew, okay. Um, could do it all with the GPS, of course, but I'm I'm trying to learn this stuff, so it's a bit more old school, and therefore I kind of like it. Bring the RPM down just a notch. It's hiccuping slightly, so. Uh, right. After Inverness, it's Duncan's Behead, but I, I'll have to program that later. Followed by Kirkwall, which is 395 kilohertz. So, yeah, okay. We're, we're, we're only basically. We're using one VOR. And the reason for that is because I kind of find VORs awkward, to be honest with you, compared to NDBs. Um, but. We're using one VOR, which is 109.8. For kin loss, and the rest is going to be using the ADF. All right. Minimize plan G. Uh, there we go. So then the head temps coming up now. All right. Well, taxi for takeoff options. Tune Aberdeen Atis, one two one point eight five zero, maybe. Now I have to switch it over to the Echo weather. Golf, Papa, Delta, airport information, Tango, zero, niner, two, zero, Zulu, weather, wind, two, two, one, at, one, zero, visibility, one, zero, sky condition, few clouds at, three, okay, well, that crazy robot man is telling us that the the wind is come blowing two zero one or two one zero, whichever one he says he said, and it's blowing at ten knots, so that's mainly all I wanted to know. Looks pretty good though, weather wise, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean for, for Scotland anyway. When I did the for, for the the pr previous leg for this journey, it was just low low grey cloud and rain everywhere. Good night, Telegram. See you, dude. Um, yeah, it was low cloud and rain everywhere, and it was literally... I was trying to f fly through the fucking highlands, through the glens and shit, and I'd go up into a cloud by accident, and then I'd nose down to come out of it, and I'd come out of the cloud, and you'd see, like, the ground 500 feet in front of you rushing up towards you, and I just... You know, I, I clenched. That's all I'm saying. I clenched. I could probably get taxiing though, to be honest with you, with the engines at this these settings. This is probably fine. Alright, let's unpause it. Unpause track AR. Um, right, okay. to make the mixture a bit, there we go. Alright, um... Change GPS mode. Zoom out. There we go. And, uh... Let's get going. Request taxi, depart north. North is where we are going, so let us depart north. Aberdeen Ground Piper, November 8665, Romeo with Papa. Request taxi for takeoff north departure. November 8665, Romeo, taxi to and hold short on runway 16 using taxiway Bravo Whiskey. Contact tower on 118.11 ready. 
Okay. Acknowledge taxi clearance. Uh, where the hell is Taxiway Bravo fucking whiskey? Maybe that's it. B, it says B and then W, so... I can only assume... We can turn on progressive taxi, though, I think, can't we? Yeah, there we go. We've got dum dumb mode enabled. Awesome. Right, that'll be me sorted out, then. Uh, hold short runway 16. Okay. I'm using Taxiway B. Right, take out the parking brakes. And... Let's go. And shove in the headphones while we're at it. Sound head temp seems to have come up to a reasonable level. I'm actually going to take out the headphones because now it's too quiet. Awkwardly so. One of these days I'm just going to say hang the copyright laws and put some music on. Flying with passengers? No, not yet, actually. It might be worth a go at some point, though. Forever alone! But, <laughs> yeah, I know. Just to see what it does to the flight model. So, out of curiosity, was I right? Am I on the correct taxiway? I mean, I know I'm on the correct taxiway because I've got the, the arrows in front of me, but is this the one I was after? I don't know. To be honest with you, this is the, the what what a sensible person would do in real life is actually look up charts of the air, airport they're actually at and the one they're going to, so they know which taxiway was Bravo Whiskey, instead of trying to guess. But luckily, I can turn on progressive taxi mode, which is basically for lazy idiots like me who don't want to look that stuff up shows me where I need to go. And this is probably why the ATC at Duxford is broken, because pro this progressive taxi thing at Duxford doesn't work. It's broken. I think it's probably because of the Duxford scenery I downloaded. Chart. <laughs> Well, you, you put the charts on your iPad. I mean, that's the thing. Oh, who was it that mentioned Air Hauler in the comments for the, for the update video I did? Because I'd forgotten about Air Hauler, and I'm glad someone mentioned it, because it might be quite fun to do that. In addition to the sort of historical series I want to do with this, it might be fun to set up a do a little mini Let's Play series of FSX where I set up my own cargo company and you know that sort of thing. And oh, I'm going over the line. Uh, whoops, whoops, shit. Uh, hi ATC. I totally did not go over the line. Except you're pretty sure I did, don't you? Uh, uh, crap. <laughs> um. Request takeoff clearance via far from Aberdeen Tower. Piper is ready at runway 16, departure to the north. There we go. Okay, I think I just, for some reason, I had the wrong radio frequency selected. That's strange. Okay, awesome. Acknowledge takeoff clearance. Clear for takeoff runway 16, Piper 65, Romeo. Awesome! Let's go. Sometime today would be nice. Piper command sheet. Thank you. A 
Has there been a single legal takeoff during these streams? Um, a few. Although I do take off from Duxford a lot, which complicates issues, doesn't it, really? <laughs> Okay, here we go. All right, prop will will be full as soon as I throttle up. It's just being weird again. What? You did not just clear a beach XAT has been cleared to land on my runway. Uh, perhaps we should fucking go. What the hell? I haven't cycled the prop or done the mags checks either yet though, so, oh fuck. Let's do that quickly. Okay. Mags are up at 2,000. Disable mags. Small drop. Small drop. Okay, cool. Spark plugs aren't fouled then at least. Okay, and also... Cycle the prop. Full course. Rich. Awesome. Mixture full rich. Fuel booster is on. Fuel's looking good. Okay, we're ready to do this. Rotate now. Off we go. Gear up. Boy, crikey, there's some wind. Look, I'm practically flying sideways right now. That's nuts. Okay, reduce the climb settings. Okay. Welcome to Aberdeen, everybody. I'll turn around so we can get a look at the airfield in a second. Or better yet, I'll just go external. There you are. That's that motherfucker that was cleared to land while I was taking off. That little light over there. I don't know why he's lit up like that. That's a bit weird, but never mind. What's that about all caps? Mm. Do try not to, folks. I, I need to put it in the rules under the stream, don't I really? To be honest, I sort of forgot about it. And there seems to be a lake over there that's occasionally flashing. Awesome. I'm also getting lots of screen tearing still because it's uh, because Windows Aero is disabled. But never mind. Yeah, well, that's probably why I hadn't thought of it, Mark. To be honest with you. Uh, to, to be entirely fair to everybody in the chat, the reason I hadn't thought of putting a, a no cap rule is because people don't seem to abuse it too much. Okay. June to Aberdeen approach on 119.050. Okie dokie. Uh, 119. Oh god. Wrong way. 119. Point. What was it? 050. Jobs are good. Request flight. No, that's not request flight following, frankly. It's annoying. And it serves no purpose. No real purpose, anyway. I know where all the airspaces are, and I know which ones I need to contact people on if I need to. Like, I know where all the Class D airspace is, and if I fly into that, I have to contact ATC, but other than that, I'm free to just do what I want.
still see that fucking Pacifica Airlines. CRJ down there. Or CJR or whatever it was, I've forgotten. Alright then. Where's me MDB at? Come on. Why am I not getting a signal? I'm definitely tuned to the right one, aren't I? Oh, the other thing is I know how to use the autopilot now. Check this out. Um, let's set a heading. Where we we need to be going north at the moment, so. So I'm gonna lower my engine settings a little. Something a little more economic. And a little easier on the engine, mind you. Right, there we go, that's better. Um, and now, if I adjust my heading bug to straight ahead, and I hit this button twice, we now have heading autopilot. So the plane will automatically fly on whatever course I set that little green arrow. To. I just need to trim it out for level flight myself with the trimmer, and we're fine. There we go. Nice. So now I'm doing that. Now it's all trimmed out and it's on autopilot. I can check out my charts. So 301.5. Is that kilohertz? It's kilohertz, yeah. Weird. Well, I'm not getting a signal from it then. I mean, it's right there. Check what the range is on that NDB. Oh, it's huge. The range on that on on Kinhead's head is massive. We're well within it. So I don't know what's going on. Let's go to this and then this. On again. Well, that's weird. Not picking up the NDB station. Well, it's not the end of the world because I can just do this, you know, pretty much, you know, visually. Because we're just following a coastline, really. Nothing special. But that's a little annoying. Yeah, yeah, the Kaisar has marked you for death. Just like, coming in over the radio and you're like, for fuck's sake. Gotta be honest with you, this little bit of Scotland here is kind of boring looking. We'll get the interesting bit later though, once we hit the highlands. Now would be a good time for you to work, EDF. You fucking useless piece of shit. Jesus Christ. We should be, we're well high enough now to pick up the signal, so I don't know what it's doing. Want to borrow the circuit breaker. Just side two and coordinate a breaker. Maybe I need to reset a circuit breaker somewhere. Start at Navcom. Reset the breakers for those. 
Oh, fuel pump needs to be off. I keep forgetting that. Maybe we need to put the rotating beacon on. Is that it? Strobe light, landing light, navigation, and instruments lights. Surely not. That's just the lights. I shouldn't have to do that. I can put my headphones in though, because it's getting kind of noisy. confused by this. Don't really know what to make of it. Whoa, steady there, aeroplane. Jesus. I'm going nose diving on me. Hmm. Oh, that's disappointing. Maybe if I switch to a different NDB. Nothing. Not a sausage. The indicator's just doing nothing. Come to think of it, the, uh, the HSI's not doing anything either, so... Oh, nearly. Oh, oh, we're getting something. There we go. What's that about then? That'll be from... If I could read more Morse code, I'd know what that was. Maybe if I... Hang on a minute. If I turn Morse to the right... In theory, we should get a signal once I'm pointed directly at... the signal source. Hey, there we go, look. Because this ain't working. Is this working? No, that's not working either. None of my navigation instruments are working, although I am picking up a signal. I don't know. You guys talking about Elder Scrolls lore again? Jeez. Is there a more boring subject? I mean, that's just my honest opinion, but I, these days I find fucking Elder Scrolls lore to be one of the most boring, yawn-worthy things I've ever had the uh, displeasure of getting into an argument over. Elder Scrolls lore stopped being interesting after Morrowind. It really did. I don't see what the big fuss is anymore. Well, to be precise, it stopped being interesting after Michael Kirkbride left. So... Well, all my navigation instruments seem to be buggered, and I don't know why. Which really sucks, to be honest with you, because I thought I was getting somewhere with this. I thought I was learning, and apparently it seems I'm not. My nav one's not switched on audibly, so I was picking up the ADF there. It's just the ADF indicator ain't, ain't showing me jack shit right now. Even though I'm getting a signal.
there were a couple of guys in here on the last stream I did that actually knew how this stuff worked and they were able to help me, but I'm assuming they're probably not here right now. Well, thank God for GPS, at least, I suppose. Nothing else. And if I switch it off. And nothing, of course. Is there something I'm, let me look at the mini controls menu. Is there something I'm missing? Sunglasses. Clearly that is the important, most important thing ever. What if I just turn the nav instrument lights on? Does that do anything? No. Uh, oh, my fuel mixture was on full rich this whole time. That was a bit stupid. Oh, you can shut up now, ADF, you're not working, so... Alright, well, I guess I'll just GPS the shit and uh, enjoy the scenery. But that's really pissed me off, to be honest. thought I had this shit figured out, it turns out I don't. Reset the breaker on the HSI. Doesn't seem to be doing anything either. Oh god, we're in a cloud. Wonderful. Reduce throttle and dive. There we go, that's better. I d fucking shut up, stupid thing. Well, I'm still getting beeped at, even though I thought I'd turn the radio off. Which confused me to no end, to be honest. But, uh, whatever. Autopilot altitude hold switch. What does that do? Doesn't hold my altitude because it's not working. <laughs> Shut up, you stupid radio.
Oh, maybe this is in the wrong position or something. Frequency. Hold. Frequency. Uh, distance. Ground speed. Time to station. None of this shit is working. Marker DME, I'm switching that off. I'm confused. Anyway, never mind, I'm going to give up at this point officially. I don't know why it's buggered, but it's buggered. fuck you guys are talking about, but... <laughs> yeah, you it's a hill! Of some description. Wow, I had no idea there were so many bits of Scotland that were just flat like this. I mean, wow. It's a little... Disappointing to be honest. If I'm brutally honest. Uh, you know. What does that do? Nothing apparently. How's fuel doing? Fuel is totally fine, we've barely used any. Wow, you're really... 81% full, yeah. Barely used 20% of our fuel. In the tip tanks, anyway. Plenty more el elsewhere. Oh, that's what it, F and AF stands for. I was trying to think. Well, I managed to get rid of the beeping, not sure how, but it did it. ADF still broken. Awesome! Even before we get into, like, the, the, the maintenance hangar, and I discover that there is literally something, like, broken in the plane, and that's why none of the gauges are working. Hey, listen to, the, listen to the ATC. That Pacifica jet that we saw when we took off is finally taking off. He's been told to climb to flight level 230, which is, I think, 23,000 feet, if I recall. Hmm, cool. Radiant AI, he eat your heart out. <laughs> Look at the sea. It's not brilliant, actually. Let's not look at the sea. 
Um, you can make it look really nice on max settings, but they just destroy my graphics card. The highest water settings in this game. What's our altitude? About 3,000 feet, that's okay. Uh, are we heading into anything we should know about right now? I don't think we are. Right. I'm thinking in terms of airspace. I don't want to wander into a firing range, do we, after all? There's lots of them about in Scotland, apparently. Well, it takes forever to get those jets up and running, I suppose, prototype. I mean, it was parked at the gates. So that doesn't necessarily mean they were even in any, there's anyone inside. You know, they may have just got it up and running and got people boarding. So... But yeah, I mean, like, the pre-flight shit for, like, a 737 or a 777 or any airliner like that takes easily, like, half an hour. Oh, oh, look, there's a dot. Who the fuck's that, then? Is it a plane or is it a bird? No, it's actually a bird, I think. Is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, no, it's a bird. It's definitely a bird. Hmm. There's a little eagle or some sort of bird of prey flying along up there. Damn. Apparently, if you get, like, some of the scenery for Australia, there they actually did a shark. They made a little shark and they put him in the, um, in the bay in Sydney. <laughs> I'm told, anyway, I've never seen it myself. Okay, well, my VOR's not working either, even though we, we, should, we should be pointing at Kinloss VOR right now, because me. Thingamajig is set to it, so. But nothing here. HSI is completely broken. It's not working at all. You'd know if it wasn't, because this part of the yellow bar here would be moving from side to side if it was working, but it isn't, so... this on heading and just the heading bug to straight ahead maybe on autopilot now maybe I'm gonna sit down and figure this out Well, it's not that I'm ignoring all the debating, debating and discussion, it's just you... I'm, I'll, I'll be honest, guys, you're not discussing anything that's very interesting. I know, that's a very subjective thing, but fair enough, it's not very interesting to me. How in the balls do I get my, radi my, my radios to work? Why is the unsafe light glowing on my landing gear right now? It's definitely up, isn't it? Should be. Oh. He was in the up position, but not the off position. Okay. Well, the unsafe light's still on. Never mind. I... Yeah, no, it's up. It's Everything's fine. I... Fucking light's broken, guys. <laughs> GPS battery needed replacing. Light's broken. Radios don't seem to be working. This plane is in a bit of a state. I'm going to try and tune the bottom radio, see if we have any luck with that. Hey, we're having some luck with the bottom radio, because this just moved. Nice. I think it did. Let me just disable autopilot. It will now beep. Do a turn off to the left. 
Okay, no, that's not working either. Grand. KSS in Morse. Uh, that does mean something to me because KSS is the code for. If I check Plan G, is is the code for kin loss. So, yeah. So the kin loss VOR was broadcasting to me then. Okay, I try. Change something else on the back. Inverness then. Inverness is three to eight kilohertz. That's the Inverness NDB. What about the Inverness VOR if it's got one? No, oh, use. Yeah, that's Ken Lost broadcasting to me again. One zero nine point two megahertz. Oh, hey, the Inverness VOR is working. Apparently, the Kin Loss one isn't, though. And I tell you what, the Kin Loss one looks slightly different in on Plan G's map. It doesn't have a radial around it, so. Maybe that means something. Also, Kin Lost is an, is an RAF base, so I don't know, maybe it's encrypted or some shit. I've, who fucking knows? Should be coming up on uh, Lossy Mouth soon ish, actually. Should be just down there on that outcropping of land, or possibly the one beyond it. Oh, now I've got a different thing. Alright, well, none of the ADF seem to want to work, but... The Inverness VOR is. So if I adjust this, yeah, here we go, look. So the yellow bar gets close to the middle. And the closer it gets to the middle more accurate the course is. There we go. See, that's... Now I just need to match up the arrow with... There we go. Now I'm pointed directly in Inverness. Okay, so Inverness's VOR is working. Some of the others aren't. Everything is now beeping at me. Um... <laughs> Distance to... No, time to, that was, I think. Time from... I'm two. Two minutes sixty four seconds, is that? No, I can't be right. Uh, distance. Forty four nautical miles away from Inverness right now, according to that. So yeah, that's working. Okay, great. Um I, I guess I need to read more into this and find out what I'm doing wrong, because this is clearly something I'm doing wrong. Maybe there's certain types of NDB stations and VOR stations that I can tune into and others that I can't. But according to this... I'm 23 minutes away. What? Really? Where is that? 
Nah, 2.2 minutes away, okay. Or, I don't know, maybe it is 22 minutes away. Really? Were you that far away from fucking Inverness? Seriously? That doesn't seem right. Jesus, okay. Uh, well, it is a fair old way, actually, so... But 20 minutes seems a lot. Whatever. Maybe it's also basing itself on my course deviation. Cheese flavored cracker, so like Ritz biscuits then. Ritz crackers. Clouds at the minute. Should probably bring it down slightly. Nine point one more nickel miles away now. Ooh, ground speed. Apparently, I'm yeah. It says I'm doing one hundred and sixteen knots, which could be about right. Actually, it sounds about right. It's pretty neat. I can get my ground speed through the radio. That's badass. One hundred and twenty knots now. Nineteen minutes away. Maybe it is correct. Nineteen minutes. It was. Yeah. Alright, well, we, guys, we've got about 20 minutes before we get to Inverness, apparently. According to the Radio of Doom. Now would be a good time for a QA and a since we don't have much that's very interesting to look at. I've got to be honest, this particular stretch of the Scottish coast is a little... Well, it looks remarkably like the English coast, to be honest with you. It's, it's not amazing. It's just lots of flat bits with a few hills here and there. I mean, that... All the way out there, you can see that in the distance. You can see the highlands. All those bumps. All those little mountains and valleys and stuff. That's where the really cool shit is. We're just following the coast at the minute. Now, I believe Lossy Mouth Air Base is over there. Yep. Kinloss is further along. airliner up there somewhere, contrailing away. There he is. He's at this end because it's getting bigger. Wonder where he's off to. Damn you, sir! I would. L I really. I really want to learn how to fly an airliner in this game, so I can go up to like forty thousand feet across the Pacific Ocean and the Atlantic and shit. Someday, folks, that'll be me up there, looking down on the little scrub in his Comanche. Doing his low level VFR flights. Ah, well. If you could own any single plane from any point of history in real life, what would it be? Pfft, shit, I don't know really. You know, it'd be easy to say something like, oh, I'd love a, love a Spitfire, but it'd be, I'd be too afraid to fly it because. Spitfires are fucking fragile, and they don't... 
they very easily overheat, they're very high maintenance, they're very costly to run. Um, when I start doing videos of this on YouTube and I do the Spitfire, which will probably be one of the first ones I do, you'll see what I mean. Um, it's a real pain in the ass, it's not fun to fly at all. Uh, well, I mean it is fun to fly, but it's not fun to take off and land in. You spend more time looking at your temperature gauges than you do actually looking everywhere else. There's not a huge amount of castles anymore in England. I mean, Wales and, and Scotland you, you, you would be better bets if you want to go look at castles. And France. France has loads of the bloody things. You can't, you can't go five miles without tripping over a castle in France. Yeah, it's nuts in it, man, Stegger. Sometimes you don't appreciate the relative size. But I suppose the difference is that the UK is in, is just monstrously crowded. In terms of, like, population per square mile, we're way ahead of America. Which is why we have tra constant traffic jams on all our motorways, and it's why it takes so long to get anywhere on roads and trains and things. The UK, even though our island is relatively tiny. What's your most fondly remembered game of Crusader Kings 2? Uh, the one where I inherited the entire Byzantine Empire, which included Finland for some reason. That was a good laugh. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. <laughs> I wouldn't call the the London Underground efficient. In fact, that's probably one of the last words I'd use to describe it. Have you done anything interesting with Kaiserreich recently? Nah, not really. I haven't touched it in a while. Probably a few new versions out for it or something by now. Just put this on autopilot so I can show you guys something. Oh, I forgot about the heading bug. Oh, let's leave that there. That should do it. Oh, yeah. And then say hello to RAF Lossy Mouth, which. Oh, God, Trekker, what are you doing? There we go, that's better. RAF Lossy Mouth, which is where the Typhoon Squadrons used to take off from, I think, and they used to have Vulcan bombers there. During the Cold War. I believe it's being shut down now though. Kinloss is the only active RAF base in Scotland still going, I think. Fucking budget cuts, but what can you do? Anyway, I put it on autopilot for a reason. Yeah, I can give you a sneak preview of my Patreon page if you like. There you go. That's what it looks like for now. Subject to change. It doesn't have a video for it yet. That's the main last thing I need to do still. But, uh, yeah. It's not launched yet, so no, you, you guys normally can't see it, but... Um, soon. Soon. Oh, look at the low clouds down there. Just hovering over the landscape. Uh, also, what? 
Our altitude's getting a little high at the moment. I don't know, 5,000's probably okay. I'll just trim down slightly. Ah, and there's Kin Kinloss in front of us there. Hello. Now look out over the other side of the estuary here and you can see lots of mountains and things because those are the highlands, oh yes. We'll go in there soon. We'll go fly through some valleys and glens and it'll be great. And then we'll go up to the Orkney. Uh, you go up to Orkney and that'll be probably interesting too. And then up to the Shetlands. Out into the North Sea. Yeah, you, you should have seen my face at some point. I, I don't I don't make a habit of going on camera very often, main mostly because I have a shit I don't have a I don't have a decent camera. All I've got is like my phone, so but I've been on camera before. It's not it's no kind it's no real mystery or anything. Autopilot. I don't want to fly directly over Kinloss because I might get shot down. <laughs> Although, interestingly enough, in spite of there being an RAF base here, there's no like air traffic control data covering it or anything. There's no like airspace restrictions here or anything at all. It's just, you know, theoretically. As far as I'm aware, anyway, there are probably other rules and stuff you have to follow, but theoretically, you could just I could just fly straight over Kinloss at any altitude I like, and it would be totally legal. Which seems odd to me, but there it is. Yeah, that was a funny man sticker, I remember that. Oh, that was my old room, that was years ago. Things have changed since then, big time. But yeah, no, I had a little collection of flags. People got really hung up on the fact that I had a Soviet flag in there. Got it from an army surplus warehouse, I think, for memory serves. Just because just I thought it was cool. I've got an 82nd Airborne flag as well and an American flag somewhere and you know whatever <sighs> excuse the yawning it's getting kind of late I think I may have overestimated Oh, sorry, underestimated just how long this journey is. That's the longest one I've done so far. It was nearly 200 nautical miles, but... Jesus Christ, we've been here a while now. Just the old course thingy majigger. It's a bit more like it. Let's not fuck about. Let's go straight for Inverness. People actually died because of not being frank on the radio about the trouble they're <laughs> Class. Oh god, I'm right. Need to lose some altitude now because of one of them clouds up ahead. 
frankly I can use it as an opportunity to gain some speed. Am I going into a headwind? I wonder, maybe if I am, maybe that's why we're going so slow. So it's funny you should mention that, J-Double, because I've got a piece of rebar I took from Utah Beach, actually. <laughs> There's lots of it about, isn't there? fluid picking up some real speed and I can do this because I've got all the you know additions like the the wing roots reinforced and the tip tanks and stuff that all make the wings much stronger so I can I can go pretty fucking fast in this thing now without having to worry I mean you know quite inverted commas fast 220 miles per hour is not really that fast. <laughs> Apparently we're four minutes away from Inverness. Now this yeah this this look at this this is this is more like it this is Scottish weather right here. So all this clear sky bollocks is about. It's a Scotland. We want lots of dark, dirty clouds and rain. This looks like Inverness. At least I should think so. I mean, my VOR thingy image is pointing straight at it. We're not landing at Inverness though, we're heading north. Or, I don't know, maybe I should land at Inverness. Maybe we should cut the flight in half. It's not like we did. We, well, we've got plenty of fuel. It's not that. Not like that's a problem. It's just sort of. Oh, Project Cars, mate. The graphics in that game. You know, the, the guys who made Project Cars are doing a um, Red Bull Air Race game as well, and it looks gorgeous. You need to go to bed soon, eh? Um, to be honest with you, mate, we're barely halfway there, to be honest. I think. Uh, if we. Where's Plan G gone? Uh, monitor 2. There you go. We have travelled up here, all the way along here, and this is Inverness up ahead right now. Um, right in front of us, so we're about th there-ish. We now have to go all the way up here, and then land at Kirkwall in the Orkneys. Or, well, how do you call it? Is it Orkney? Or the Orkney Islands? Or the Orkneys? Whatever. Up here. So, and that's quite a long trip in and of itself, to be honest with you. So yeah, might be a while yet, mate. Unless I choose to land at Inverness now and just call it a day. So. Yeah. 
Anyway, I need to actually start paying attention to air traffic shit at this point. Come to think of it. Where is Plungy? Let me have a look. Okay. We're in the ILS path. We need to avoid Fort George, apparently. Fort George is... Oh, God. We really need to zoom in. Fort George is this area here. This little triangle bit there. We need to avoid that. Apparently that's a danger zone. Don't know why. It just is. So, I think we'll keep heading south and get to the, the narrowest point in those straights up ahead where I think there's a bridge of some sort and then we'll swing right and then we'll head up the coast into the highlands and then up to the furthest point of Scotland before you get to the Orkneys or Orkney, I really should call it Orkney Orkney sounds like that. that's what you're supposed to call it it's just because you call the Shetlands the Shetlands Anyway, I need to stay out of these clouds because otherwise I get blinded. Seriously, we need to lose some. Oh god, we're right over the field as well. That's probably not a good idea. Hello, Inverness. Where actually is Inverness itself? I see the field, but where's the town? I kind of always assumed Inverness was a sort of largish town, but I don't see shit. Nothing but suburbs. Weird. Oh no, Inverness, ah right, now this is Inverness, like, air, airport or whatever. But, Inverness itself is all the way down there. That's Inverness. Right, hence the confusion. Fantasy series that takes place during a Renaissance type era. Uh, the Witcher, maybe, I guess. A lot of the dudes in The Witcher wear Renaissance type clothes. Look at this massive, like, bunch of dark clouds just hovering over Inverness. Like, the entire town is collectively having, having a bad day. Jeez, yeah, see, look at that. It's suddenly mountains. Mountains, Gandalf. Alright, let's make a right turn here. So what would I need to tune into now, theoretically speaking? Oh hey look, my, my fucking ADF has suddenly started working. Ugh. And it's pointing to the thing I flew past donkeys years ago. Jesus Christ, stupid, bloody, useless fucking... Argh. So I need to make sure I'm above 2,000 feet for this next bit.
to plan G. Okay. Right. So. Duncan's behead. 290.5 kilohertz. Alternatively. Wick BOR is 113.6 megahertz. Let's give that a go. Ah, here we are. Oh, this is working then. Alright, I'll continue using VORs for now, because the NDB seem to be playing silly buggers with me. There we go. Very nice. Also... Right, well, Duncan's be had 290.5 kilohertz. It's not picking up Duncan's behead. I wonder why that is. I don't really know much about how these these different radios work and what the, how the radio waves work and stuff like that. Maybe a perfectly good reason for all this in terms of laws of physics type stuff. I mean, as opposed to having me having just forgotten to press a particular button or something. All I know though is the the VOR for Wick is working, and that's all I need. So that means we can go flying around like a silly person in the Highlands for a bit and not have to worry about a damn thing. Because even without the GPS, we'd still be able to make it to our destination. So we're coming up on this little this little block of airspace in front of us here. This, this we need to be above two thousand feet through as we go through it. After that, we can go back down to as low as we like. So because that's the law, damn it. Them's the rules. So we we're we're up at four thousand feet though right now. So no, well three and a bit. So we're we're quite okay. And I'm beginning to wonder, actually, I think I know, ah, here's the thing. You know what, you know why it says minimum of 2,000 feet? It's because it's counting from sea level, and this is very, this is, this terrain is actually higher altitude. So why my, my altimeter right now says I'm flying at 4,000 feet almost, my actual height above ground is probably significantly less. Because the ground looks pretty damn close. I mean, think about it. Look at that. It looks pretty damn close. I, I feel like I'm more down at 2,000 feet right now, rather than 4,000 feet. And it's because, yeah, it's because of the terrain elevation. Uh, makes sense now. Because I was a bit like, well, why am I arbitrarily not allowed to go b below like 2,000 or 5,000 feet in the highlands? There's nothing there, other than a few mountains. Oh god, and clouds apparently. Um. Whee, there we go. Um, so, you know, it really had me a little confused, but now I get it, I think. Anyway, let's, let's go up this way. I don't think we will get another spin-off like New Vegas after Fallout 4, primarily because Bethesda pissed off Obsidian so much with New Vegas. I'm fairly sure Obsidian will not, will prob probably won't want to work with Bethesda ever again. I mean, anything can happen, I suppose, but I'd be very surprised. 
Obsidian just do Kickstarter stuff these days anyway, they're sort of doing their own thing. So you say that Horde Tour, but I've always found it to be completely the opposite. I can explore New Vegas for hours and hours and hours and I really actually get bored. Whereas Fallout 3, I have tried to play that game, I have tried to like it as much as I can, but I just feel like falling asleep and switching off after playing that game for maybe 20 or 30 minutes. Running around in the wasteland. When you when you take the, the DC, downtown DC area out, out of Fallout 3, the rest of it is boring as fuck really dull in my honest opinion I mean because I, I I started replaying it a bit recently um, I reinstalled it I installed Fallout Wonders Edition and I've been playing through the main quest of it and you know not with Jess just with a different character um, and I, I really have not been enjoying it nearly as much as New Vegas Yeah, well, you know, I see, I see what you mean, Classic. I mean, the, the original guy was called The Vault Dweller. Not A Vault Dweller, he was called The Vault Dweller. I'm pretty sure they only ever intended on doing that whole thing once, which is why in Fallout 2 you were a tribal. And in Fallout New Vegas you could be pretty much anyone you liked. But no, Bethesda seems to, have, seems to be a bit hung up on the whole Vault Dwelling aspect. You gotta start off in a vault every freaking time! And now, because and this is something I've said before, Bethesda. The other thing they get hung up on is the pre-war stuff. Bethesda really get really obsessed over the pre-war stuff, and you'll notice Subsidian slash Black Isle and whatever. They didn't. You know, even in Fallout 2 with the Enclave, it really didn't focus much on the pre-war stuff at all. It was a very much background thing. But in Fallout 3, they fucking obsess over it. And in Fallout 4, you are playing as a guy who was alive before the war and goes into this vault and gets fucking cryogenically frozen or whatever. And the thing is, the, the, the fucking pre-war world in Fallout is not the interesting part of Fallout. So why Bethesda insist on obsessing over it so much, I don't know. But I, I don't like it, to be honest with you. I don't care about pre-war in the United States. I don't. In the Fallout universe, it's interesting, ish, but I'm more interested in stuff like the NCR and what's going on on the West Coast and all those different crazy factions. Oh yeah, and the Enclave in Fallout Three made no fucking sense whatsoever. No, you're completely, completely right on that too. I mean, I, I don't. Pff. Fallout Three's plot was like this rehashed mishmash of the first two games. You know, find Gek, fight Enclave. Question mark, question mark, question mark, profit. Yeah, but no, it doesn't have a very clear line, though, order at all. That's only one way to play it. You can, and I've done this plenty of times before, you get out of Good Springs and you immediately head north. You sneak past all the Death Claws, you go straight to the Vegas Strip, and you therefore, and then you meet Mr. House. Or, alternatively, you kill Benny and never go and see Mr. House. You can go through pretty much the entire main quest without meeting Mr. House until a certain point where you have to. Which I don't really want to spoil. But, yeah. Honestly, the, the, the New Vegas main quest is way less linear than Fallout 3's. Way less. Yeah, yeah, the second sin, join the Legion and blow up the monorail. That's what I did with my first character that finished the game. It was awesome. <laughs> Right, 
right, we... Oh, God, I'm skirting on the edge of a danger zone right now. Shit. Move to the left, move to the left. Fuck me! Holy crap! Okay! Uh... Oops. Oh, we haven't been shot down by a cruise missile, so I can only assume that wasn't a problem. Liberty Prime was fun, yes, but again, that and the Anchorage DLC is another example of Bethesda obsessing over the pre-war stuff. I'd love to get Orbex Scotland installed just to see how it compares to the FTX Global version we're seeing right now. Because I'm, I'm just, I'm not totally convinced by all these big open fields like, right, like we're seeing now. I mean, these are the kind of fields you'd expect to see in France or Holland, not Scotland. Especially not the Highlands, but I don't know, I could be wrong. It just doesn't doesn't look quite right to me. Oh crap, oh crap. Slightly over speeding right now. Slightly overspeeding. I just went into a cloud that was just massive, apparently. Wow. Shitting bollocksing hell. Whew. That was slightly scary when I saw the. <sighs> the airspeed indicator going, you know, just shooting up like that. Bloody hell. I could do without that, thanks very much. We should dip down, actually, and get a closer look at the terrain. Nose diving for the win. Oh, we're getting close to our maximum dive speed. Oh, there it is, more or less. Ooh. An earth shattering 220 miles per hour. Truly, we are breaking the sand barrier here, kids. There we go. Now you can look in through people's back gardens and stuff. God, it does look a lot. It does look quite different when you're down here, doesn't it? All the contours in the land suddenly become much more exaggerated. The only thing is now I need to pay attention so I don't crash into anything. so I can climb over these hills when necessary. We've got the fuel to spare anyway, so I can burn a bit of it doing this. Oh, and look at that. I've lost VOR signal because I've gone too low and there's too many hills and stuff in the way. Huh. Radio waves aren't, aren't managing to get to me over those mountains and shit. Are we coming up on the edge of another whole shit ton of airspace? I think we are, yeah. Need to make a right turn here then. Cut the throttle a bit here. Ooh. Get down to 1818 again. That seems to be the smoothest setting for the Comanche, actually. Like, it barely judders at all. If you look at the GPS, it's, it's not wobbling much at all when you get it down to those settings. It just seems to like it for some reason. That's good fuel economy wise, too, so.
Oh, is it another bird? Is that another birdie? It might be. There's a few of them. Oh, we've got the signal back anyway. We're slight. We're just high enough now. So, okay, okay, come on, come on. Am I tuned into the right bloody VOR right now? Because it doesn't look like I am. Alright, let me point this sucker up so I can put the autopilot on. There we go. Let me just check. I'm tuned into the right bloody station. Oh god. Oh god. Forgot about the heading bug. Oh crap. Oh crap. Oh crap. Right, there we go. Oof. I always forget about that. I assume it's a straight line autopilot, but it's not. It actually follows the heading that you've set for it, or possibly have not set, depending. Okay. One one three point six megahertz. No, we're tuned into it, all right. It's just the white arrow on the display is pointing in the wrong direction. Whatevs. Actually, that does look, based on our GPS position, that does look about right, so. Oh, my trim can stop spazzing out now, thanks very much. Autopilot can also go off. I can minimize plan G so I can see the chat again. Oops. You well, Fallout 4 will have more str more more survival mechanics because Bethesda are clearly trying to cash in on the whole open world survival thing going on at the minute. So you bet your ass it's going to have lots of survival crap in there. Once upon a time, Fallout was an RPG, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know what it is anymore. It's probably still going to be fun, but you know. You know, do, do I really want base building and tower defense in, in an RPG? Not sure I do. It's not unwelcome, but the, 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 the thing is, you've just got to remember that the time it took them to build their tower defense and base building stuff was time that was, as a result, not spent on other things. the spruces. We're in Scotland, alright. following this little river as well down through this valley.
There's probably some sort of law against this, to be honest with you, because I'm disturbing all the residents here. And suddenly the sea. And suddenly restricted airspace. Time to veer left. This is this is by the this is unsettlingly good weather for Scotland, uh, by the way. I'm I feel a little bit cheated to be honest with you. I was hoping for nice big rainstorms and thunderstorms and huge cloud formations and shit and fog. When I decided I was gonna fly up to Scotland. But no. What did I get? Sunny skies. What time is it in game right now? It's coming up to 11.45. Which means we've been flying for almost two hours, Christ. Right, we need to... Right, okay, we either need to thread this tiny little bit of airspace here. We need to go around and then around that way. Or we need to climb up above 2,000 again in order to get past this bit in front of us. Which is a shame, because look at this fucking scenery, man. It's gorgeous. In fact, I'm going to veer left a bit. I'm going to go explore. What's the process for becoming a qualified pilot in England? Like, I don't know, because I'm not a qualified pilot yet. <laughs> Generally speaking, unless you join the Royal Air Force or something like that, you have to pay a lot of money to do lessons until you get your PPL. much more than that, I don't really know. Look at that big ass hill over there. I'm going to go fly around it. Yeah, no, I've got to be honest, um, the UK is not quite as exciting as it's made out to be. <laughs> it's just really not. Scotland's highlands and the coast is about the most interesting it gets come when it come when it when you think geographically and maybe a few bits of Wales. But it's nothing really to have a song and dance about, to be honest. On the other hand, we don't have any weird climate shit. We don't have to deal with stuff like tornadoes, we don't you know, tropical storms, none of that shit. Vicious wildlife. I mean, there are no bears left, or wolves, in the UK, because we hunted those fuckers to extinction, because we're sensible like that. Oh man, just coming around this hill like this. Just seeing all that open country in front. That's so damn cool. Enough clowning around. Time to climb up to 2,000. Pretty sharpish, actually. There we go. That's 2,000. I'll just get a bit more from good measure. There's 
another airliner up there, contrailing away. So it might I think at least I think it's an airliner. God knows. Could be an RAF tanker or a fucking Putin sending one of his bombers over again. I'm thinking he's scaring someone. Nearly 3,000 feet. Okay, that's plenty of clearance. So why this specific bit then? Because it actually gets lower here. At this bit we're crossing over, and then the the restrictions removed again, a couple of miles in front. Very strange. One of these days, I'll get off my lazy ass and I'll look this stuff up and actually find out why these restrictions are here. Because it tells you on some of them, like if it's a glider area or something, it'll actually say. But um, with this one, no. Alright, good night, man sticker. Oh yeah, I suppose you're right, Thunder. There, there, there are those occasional weird freak tornadoes. But the only people, the only reason people remember them is because they're so freaking out of the ordinary. Let's try and tune the the HSI again. All right, there, look, there we go. I've officially decided I like VORs more than NDBs, because unlike the NDBs, they don't seem to be playing silly buggers with me. Even though the NDBs, I kind of liked them because they're a bit more straightforward, it was just arrow points towards it, fly a lot, fly towards the arrow, but... You know, that's no good if they don't actually work half the time. Come on, little yellow arrow, meet up in the middle, you know you want to. Come on! There we go. That'll do it. I can even, what's even what's really cool about VORs actually, is that I can tune my autopilot, I can put it on tracking low, and it will, in fact I'll do it right now, why not, bit of a demonstration. And now the autopilot will lock onto the signal being broadcast by the VOR and it will fly towards it all by itself. How cool is that? I don't have to do a damn thing, we're like, we're, we're like a 747 right now, we're just flying on autopilot. All I have to do is lock in the, the VORs on, on the route and the plane will do all, everything itself. I wish it was a 747, yeah. How <laughs> much further is it? And see, look, you can tell it's doing its job because the yellow arrow is totally matched up. Some clever shit there. Uh, let's see. Distance. 12.7 nautical miles to go. In other words, five minutes. Five minutes and we will reach... Uh, Wick, isn't it? I think it's Wick. To plan G! There we go. Yes. We've just come out of this restricted area here. And... Heading up to Wick. 
And from there, I'm go probably going to try and tune into the VOR at Kirkwall, and then we'll head over that way. Look at that, the Bay of Caves. Isn't Scapa Flow around here somewhere? Anyway, yeah, that's the plan. We're nearly there now. Not much longer to go. Uh oh, what's the autopilot doing now? Getting a bit confused. It's turning in completely the wrong direction. Um, <laughs> what? What is going on? All right, that's enough autopilot. There is me singing your praises, autopilot, and then you go fuck it up. What is your problem, eh? What is your problem? Ugh. Well, maybe we went into high. What 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 the thing considers high altitude? Maybe that's why I bug it up. Let's try it again. That's not me moving the controls there, that's the autopilot. Switched into high tracking mode and it's still not doing anything. Still not doing what it's supposed to be. Whatever. Disengage. Okay. Uh... To be fair, to be honest, Jay, it's probably me not understanding how it works. Mostly, for all I know, it could have been actually doing its job and going into a holding pattern. Who knows? But anyway, um, I don't think you want you you necessarily want to be going to sleep while in a plane like this with the autopilot on for sure. No, it's literally just so you can rest your arms on the controls. Um, just take your hands off them for a few minutes. It's not like the autopilot in an actual airliner. So let's see. What's the Kirkwall up? VOR. Frequency. I've got the NDB, but I don't think I want the NDB because the NDB didn't seem to be working. It's 395 apparently. I'll give it a go. Oh, hold on. There we go. Okay, this one, this NDF seems to be working. That's alright then. NDF? Did I say NDF? NDB. I'm getting ADF and NDB mixed up. Whatever. It's getting a bit late, so... Alright, well, I won't bother fucking around with the VOR. Let's just use what works. And in this case, it's the NDB. Let's get out of the way of this cloud in front of us here. There they are. There's the there's Orkney. Out in front of us over there. And out that way is the North Atlantic. 
Someday I shall cross that. As soon as I learn to fly a plane with enough range, it'll happen. I'll do my first transatlantic flight and... Uh, I actually can't wait. I think that's going to be really awesome. It'll be a very satisfying experience if I can pull it off at least. And that's a non-stop transatlantic flight anyway, because I could obviously fly over to Iceland or something probably and then do it that way, but I'm not going to... That's not the idea. Alright, I should probably double check the airspace up in front, just to make sure I'm not going in, wandering into anything. No, it's all good. It's all good. We're clear sailing from here on out. No more restricted zones, except one off far off to the right. The, that we're never going to even touch, so there's no point in worrying about it. Yeah, it's odd to play. Odd really to call Dark Souls an RPG, isn't it? Don't really know where I sit on that one. I, mean, I suppose, on the one hand, I don't really see the need to fit everything into neat categories, but I suppose you could, at a stretch, call it a, a an RPG, but it's a very distinct kind of RPG. I'm going to go a bit lower actually, just a little more altitude. Not quite go over just the wave tops, but. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the arse end of nowhere. Further beyond these islands, there is nothing but the Faroe Islands, and. Well, that's pretty much it. Iceland, I guess, but that's not in this direction. Svalbard, I suppose. If you go far enough, and then the North Pole, the Arctic Circle. Orkney is a weird and wonderful place. As are the Shetlands, right? Because they were ruled by the Vikings for a very, very long time. Like the rest of England down south. And they still hold Viking festivals there and stuff. At certain times of the year where they get a whole bunch of guys dressed in Viking outfits walking through the town bloody centre with carrying flaming torches and a longboat, if you can believe it. It's quite interesting. What the hell's that out in front there? It's a bird! Look! Eagle! Or something! I love it when I spot random things like that. Wow, Orkney's bigger than I kind of expected it to look, actually. I mean, it's not, it's by no means huge, but still. <laughs> Cliff Racer, yeah. Funny.
can't, I kind of want to get my hands on the A2A Cessna 172 at some point actually just because it'd be a nice alternative to flying the Comanche for just doing some general aviation stuff like this plus Cessna C172 is generally what you do your flying lessons on in the UK it's a high wing monoplane unlike this which is a low wing so fixed undercarriage it's, it's kind of slower to be honest with you but still cool in its own way I wouldn't. I'd. I'd freaking love to do this sort of shit in real life. If I had a plane, I'd just. I'd do this all the time. Provided I can afford the running costs, I'd just fly from one end of Europe to the other. Stay at hotels in between flights and shit. Abandon Farnley Vegas and turn it into a flight sim channel. I tell you what, mate, I wouldn't do it, but sometimes it feels like it's tempting. Just shut it all down, start a brand new channel where I just do flight sim stuff. Although sometimes I do think about opening a second channel which is just dedicated to flight sim. But ultimately, I'm. Um, too lazy to do it. <laughs> That's the truth, really. Oh, bit off course now. Let's bring it left slightly. More birds up in front. I'd rather not have a bird strike, so before anyone says it, I'm not going to fly straight at them. Um, <laughs> Bird strikes and, and, and shit are modelled in this game, so I'd rather I didn't do it. At least it's certainly modelled on the big jets anyway, I don't know if it's modelled on a little plane like this, but I'm not keen on testing that. There they go. Little birdies. Eee. This water doesn't look dark enough, I've decided. Should be a darker blue. Honestly. Not that I'd know it for certain, I suppose. It's not as if I've ever flown over the northern coast of Scotland, but um, still. Oh, we're nearly there. we can see it from here. Yes, there it is, as a matter of fact. There you go. Now, I'm going to need to get up a... I'm going to have to bring up Plan G. I'll drag this across onto here so I can see the aerodrome. Oh, oh, oh whoops. Let me maximize that again. No, 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 that's dice. We don't want dice. We want Kirkwall, so... Uh, 
Fair Airport diagram. Okay, so that's what we're working with here. So when they call out the runway number, we know where we're, what we're doing and where we're going. Um, what is the frequency for Kirkwall? Uh, Kirkwall approach, 118.3 megahertz. No, no, I think we want tower, don't we? 118.3, yeah. Well, it's the same bloody frequency anyway, it doesn't matter. Okay. Okay, bring that up to... 3, and down to 118. Come on, come on, you know you want to. There you go. Kirkwall Approach. And I want Kirkwall Tower. Not Kirkwall Approach. Well, there's the same frequency apparently, so nearest airport list, Kirkwall. There we go. Request full stop landing. Piper, November 8665 Romeo, two miles east to land. Runway, fly straight in, runway 27. Uh, in other words, this one here with the lights next to it. Awesome. Okay. There you go. See, if we'd had this, if I'd had Plan G on the previous stream, we would never have landed on that disused fucking RAF base. It was the RAF Lake and Field School of Transport, if you can believe it. Yeah, 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 acknowledged. It wasn't even an airfield. It used to be an airfield, and it was taken over and turned into the School of Transport, so... But Pat Planchy's pretty badass. It's totally free as well. It's, it's, you can't really use it for big, like, airliner shit. You have to get different software for that, to be honest with you, but... For low-level VFR stuff, which is what I'm doing, VFR meaning visual flight rules, it's perfect. Um, you really could not do better. So... Let's come around for our approach. And okay, look, Dave, you're not flying the Lancaster anymore. You can you can afford to pull it a little tighter than this. <laughs> uh. Oh god, landing that beast was just a living nightmare. Christ. Okay, right. Prop pitch up. Gumps. That's what we need to remember. Gump. 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 Gas. Um, undercarriage. Bring that down about now. Oops. There we go. Mixture. Just done that. And P. Oh, what the fuck was P? Prop pitch. Okay, done all of those. Nice. Alright, here we go. Now let's try and make this a nice landing just to round off the whole thing. What am I doing for fuel? Oh! Still got a third of the wing tip tanks left after all that. Fair enough. Oh, not liking these high trees here. Yikes. Alright, well, this is going to be interesting. Flaps down. Okay, we're clear now. Time to lose height. wind up here seems to be very, very gentle and nice at the moment. I'm not yawing very much at all. Alright, alright, here we go. Oh, that was pretty damn smooth. Wasn't much tire, tire squeak there at all. Compared to some of my other landings, Jesus. Okay, what are you going to bet now? I'm going to exit the runway and then they're going to tell me to go in the opposite direction.
Yeah, I'm exiting the goddamn runway. Calm your tits, ATC. Jesus. I know which ground. Hand off. Request taxi to parking, please. Looks like I'm on another runway right now. Knowledge taxi clearance, turn on progressive taxi, please, and... Bloody typical! Yep, we're going the wrong way. Wait, 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 whoa, 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 look at the path it wants to take us on, that's nuts. It literally just wants to... Air traffic control, what are you smoking? Fuck that, I'm not gonna... We'll be here for another 20 minutes if we go all the way around the way he wants us to go. Jesus. Screw that. We'll go around here and then make a right at the end. There we go, now it's decided to change his mind. Stupid progressive taxi. In fact, I'm pretty sure the actual guy on the radio told us to go this way anyway, so... Because he said use taxiway runway. Not that it fucking matters, like, I'm the only one here. This airfield is deserted, so... You know, it doesn't matter what route I take, in theory from an air traffic control standpoint. Okay, here we go. go now lean out to cut off and we're done finally fuel pump off these can go off autopilot master Ignition off. Parking brake on. Ventilation and heating off. GPS off. ADF off. ADF off, badumtish. F off. Now, where the fuck's the camera? For There it is. Except it's. I don't know. That's not it. That's the one I want. Um, no, get all my views mixed up now. Fail. Um, and oops, uh, again, getting it all wrong. And where's the master switch? Off you go. Bungee cord. Is there anything else? I don't think so. I think we're pretty much good. Unless maybe I need to take the battery out of the GPS. No. Shift three. Empty plane and wheel chocks in. 
Looks like I'm done. Yep. Nice. All right then. Well, <sighs> we are now. Let's see. We're here. We're now in Kirkwall. We're in Orkney. Um, we came all the way down from Aberdeen. So we went all the way up there and up there and up there. That was nearly 200 nautical miles, which is officially the longest flight I've ever done in this game. And next time, I will probably be flying to the Shetlands up here. And after that, I don't really know. I might land, refuel, and then try and get to the Faroe Islands. But that might be that might also be an absolutely terrible terrible idea. Because if you look at it, Norway is technically closer than the Faroe Islands at that point. You know, I'd be better off flying to Bergen in Norway. So not that I'll think about it, but I do want to go see the Shetland Islands. And after that I may just pop back down here to Kirkwall and then we'll carry on along the coast. Go to Stornoway, which is this big stonking island over here. And have a fly around there, maybe later in the evening or something like that. And see what the weather's like, because you, you get some pretty monstrous weather around this bit, because obviously like the North Atlantic is hitting it straight in the face over here, because it's not shielded by Ireland or anything anymore. Stornoway gets the full brunt of the North Atlantic and all its weather, so you get some pretty crazy storms and stuff around here so that, so that could be interesting to run into but anyway yep that is us done pretty much uh, let's see I don't need to save it it's already done I'll just close it yeah I really enjoyed that I really enjoyed that it was a nice flight it was a bit boring to start with, but then the scenery started to get a bit more interesting as we got further north. And there's the petrol station right next to us. <laughs> so yeah. Oh, uh, why don't we have a look at the maintenance hangar. Excellent shape. Look at that. 12.8 hours on this plane now. The engine and the airframe are both 12 hours long. 12 hours long, 12 hours old. Which I have to say is significantly longer than I think I've ever managed to get the Spitfire. Because the Spitfire just fucking overheats all the time. Peak of the engine. Compression test. Yeah, some, some of the cylinders are wearing out a bit. Look, number one, three, and especially number five are wearing down a little bit. Um, that's not necessarily a problem. It just means they kick they kick in at higher RPMs. But, um, yeah. There's a bit of wear and tear, but very little overall. That's the main place you'll see it, really. It's the cylinders. In the engine, that's where the main wear and tear occurs. Everything else stays just about as it is, unless you do something really stupid. So, of course, there's the minor things that aren't actually displayed on here. Of course, you know, like 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 how we noticed when we were doing the pre-flight how the flaps were getting a little floppy. That's not you know that's not listed on the maintenance screen at all because nothing's technically broken. It's just you can see it's showing its age. I did change the channel logo. Uh, I explained this earlier. Basically, I needed a high res version of my channel logo to go on Patreon, and I didn't have the original high res version of my channel logo anymore. I've lost it. So I made a new one. But like I said earlier, I'm actually half tempted now to replace the new one with that hilarious picture of the dude with a mustache and the pipe, because I think it's funny. And I never liked the original channel logo very much anyway. It was just something I knocked together in, in Photoshop one day because I needed a new channel logo because of the Google Plus stuff. 
I wasn't mad keen on it, honestly. Fly into Eagle County. That's... I'm guessing that's in America. Not quite there yet. I don't know what I'm going to do with that, really. I mean, I might just pick an airport in America and start off there, but part of me kind of wants to not go to the US or all the Americas at all until I've managed to fly there properly with with some sort of transatlantic crossing, you know? It's a bit sort of, it's a bit like how I get with my fast travel when I'm playing Skyrim and Fortnite New Vegas and stuff like that. I don't want to fast travel to America if you see my, my, my point. I, <laughs> I want to actually fly there properly in order to get there. It's like when I, whenever I get around to doing my South Pole expedition, I want to start off in England and actually fly all the way to the South Pole, stopping off in various airports, you know, going through Africa and, or maybe crossing across, going across to America and flying down through Argentina. Yeah, you're probably got a point there, a prototype. I mean, if I if I thought flying up past Aberdeen was boring, <laughs> I ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> when it comes to flying across the Midwest. Yikes. Definitely going to need the autopilot for that one, yeah. Learn to fly an A380-800. Yeah, I, I've, I've set my sights on either an Airbus A380 um, or you know a 737 or a 777 one of those three and it, to be honest with you it'll probably be the Airbus first because you know the, the, the fly by wire and the automation of all the systems and stuff probably would make it easier for a newbie like me um, but yeah on the far cry off being able to do airliner stuff Pat, a friend of mine said he's going to give me a hand with it actually to be fair but um, still, I'm barely getting my head around VFR flight at the moment. Full on IFR stuff is sort of a bit like, I don't know, it's, it's sort of terrifying. <laughs> but yeah, that's the ultimate goal. Get, start flying some commercial airliners, because I think they're really cool. And I've watched I've watched countless videos of other people doing it, um, like Matt Davies, for example, on YouTube. Really, really cool guy. Um, he has a YouTube channel, and he just does um, flight sim stuff, and he does lots of videos where he and streams as well, where he flies um, commercial airliners. And the amount of like, um, you know, you'd think you would think it wouldn't be very interesting because you're just flying from A to B, mostly with autopilot. But the amount of stuff you actually have to do, either in preparation. And just as generally managing systems on the way across, it's it looks really kind of quite engaging. Plus, um, someone pointed out to me fairly recently that it might be a good idea to do some air hauler stuff, which some friends of mine used to really be into, and I'd like to have a go at it as well. Fly over the Sahara a hundred feet. Yikes! Oh my God! Like you, you have any idea what that would do to the engine? Like I'd be on the brink of overheating the whole time. Crikey! Mind you, it might be it might be fun to do at some point. I'd love to see what the engine on this thing is like. I mean, the Spitfire. That's out of the question. Jesus Christ! That thing would just be dead. Um, but I'd like to see how the Comanche does in really hot weather, hot dry weather, you know. And also, I'd like to see how it does in mega cold weather. Because I'd have to get like the engine heater out and um, really start paying attention to the carb heat. That's why it's a challenge. All right. You... <laughs> Fly over the Sahara. The Sahara at night. That'd be a lot easier. But yeah, it's not a bad idea, actually, is it, really? Flying across all those sand dunes and shit? Yeah, could be fun. It 
sounds a bit like a job for the Twin Otter, that, actually, come to think of it. I really want that plane, it just looks so good. I just, I, I, I have a thing for those, those sort of slightly bigger, twin-engined, very rugged aeroplanes that are just renowned for being able to fly in all kinds of terrain and all kinds of weather. Sort of like a, you know, not quite the same thing, but it's almost like a modern DC-3. That's why I like the DC-3 a lot as well, actually. <laughs> yeah, fly, fly across the fucking Himalayas in the Comanche. Yikes. I, I'm, I'm not sure. Even this has got enough fuel for that. Plus, the, the other thing about the Himalayas is altitude is a problem because the Himalayas are really tall. That's why they're the Himalayas. And, you know, the air is very thin up there. And I don't know if I could actually do it in the Comanche because the Comanche doesn't have any oxygen. And so it doesn't have oxygen masks and oxygen tanks. So, and it's not pressurized, the cabin. So, if, it may be the case that fuel completely aside, if I tried to fly over the Himalayas in the Comanche, I would just black out and crash into a mountain. <laughs> uh, I think I know the one you mean, Coal. Uh, massive thing is it the one the one that Howard Hughes designed uh, spruce goose was that it no no that was something else or was it I'm not sure now no that's the Grumman goose I was thinking yeah no it's spruce goose I think was the was the massive flying boat he made No, there is not a Vertibird mod. <laughs> Although there's a mod for Fallout New Vegas to let you fly Vertibirds. Come to think of it. Oh, there's got to be an, a Hercules H4 for FSX, surely. I'm playing that, that famous. Now you meant, but then, then again, I don't know. I looked at the Vulcan and the Lancaster, and they barely had anything. So Hercules H for FSX. That even came up as one of the options. The autocomplete things on Google. Oh no, that's the fucking Spruce Goose. Okay, no, I was thinking of what was the other one. Ugh. I can't remember the designations for this shit. C-130, that is it, yeah. C-130. Lockheed C-130 Hercules. Oh, just flight. C-130 Hercules. What the fuck? Oh, it's there's there's a trailer playing for it on the other screen. Oh. Captain Sims C one thirty Hercules. So without a doubt, the most sophisticated recreation of a military aircraft to grace the simulated skies. Packaging. Package includes the EHJ and gunship variants and 28 authentic liveries and is fully licensed by Lockheed Martin and the RAF. Fucking hell, really? That's kind of impressive, actually. It does look good. I'm watching the little trailer for it right now. Here you go. In in It says, amazing detail, as we sit here and watch it in 480p. Um. <laughs> Jesus. Um... Oh, it could be interesting, actually. I'll put that one on my wish list. 
I just keep getting reminded of planes that I like whenever I play this thing, and then and then more money ends up getting spent, of course. But come on, admit it, the C-130 is really actually a pretty fucking cool aeroplane. I've seen them at air shows and stuff, you know, like the, the, you know the, the fact that they can go in reverse down the runway and shit, yeah, it's, ah, man. What a cool aeroplane. Nose wheel steering, no way! <laughs> oh, you can open the back door and shit as well, that's kind of cool. They even modeled that, did they? The AC-130 is even cooler. Well, yeah, I, I mean, that it, this includes the AC-130, I think, because it says here it includes the ship variants, and the AC-130 is the gunship variant, right? If I'm correct, I may not be, but I think I am. Which reminds me, I, I, I don't think, I think I had to get a little expansion thing for the DC-3 to get it, but I could have sworn the, the Just Flight DC-3 I got included um, a Vietnam gunship version, which is essentially this hilarious, really early sort of baby version of an AC-130. It's basically, it's a DC-3. And they, but what they did is they got a whole row of miniguns and they stuck them through the side windows of of a DC three, and then they just used it as a flying gunship. Let's see if I can find it. Uh, DC three. DC three Legends of Flight. Here we go. There's, a, there's probably a screenshot of it in here somewhere. I'm sure there is. This is great, though, by the way. The Legends of Light DC3. I've got this, and it's fantastic. Uh, no, 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 no. I, you can even tow a glider with it, I think. I just not haven't figured out how exactly yet, because I'd, I'd love to do that as a, as a video. Towing a glider across the Market Garden or uh, Normandy or whatever. <laughs> Driving a jeep out of it and shit, yeah. Uh, come on, where is it? There it is! There it is! Here we go. Look at that! <laughs> Murica! <laughs> oh, wrong bloody screenshot. Here we go, yeah, there, we, there we are. America! There's another screenshot of it here somewhere. With the inside. There we go, yeah, look at that. Look at that. <laughs> Imagine, like, the recoil effect that must have had on the plane when you're trying to fly it. Like, when those things fucking fire, the whole thing must have yawed over to the side like crazy. Oh man, it looks like something like a six-year-old drew, you know? It's like, oh, plane with loads of guns sticking out of the side. Then you got the civilian versions of it, which I like, like this one. British European Airways. Very nice. Very pretty. There's the Lufthansa one as well, which I quite like. Um, this one must be Dutch. It's got orange all over it. Oh no, American Airlines. Flagship. Oh, what's this one? Oh, it's British European again. Damn it, why does it, why does it keep... Oh, there it is. There, or, or, there it was, anyway. There you go. That's technically an airliner, I suppose. I don't think you can... I don't know, actually. Can you can you go across the Atlantic in a DC-3? Uh, I 
I'm going to guess maybe not. I, I, I could be wrong, but I don't think it's quite got the range for that. I mean, the giveaway being this says British European Airways, not, not BOAC or something. <sighs> well, yeah. Anyway, yeah, this is 20 quid, which is pretty good as far as, um, you know, FSX modules go. And you get a lot of different types of the plane with, with this as well. So, yeah, if, if you're into Flight Simulator or just really like the DC-3 slash C-47, fucking get this, guys. It's really good. I'll be sure I get you in a video at some point because it's definitely one of the ones I'm going to do. I want to do... Oh, right, hold on. I'm going to see if I can find this route, this, this ridiculous flight that a friend of mine told me about that it was actually apparently quite cool, cool and worth doing. If I wanted a real challenge, he said, in a DC-3, I should give this a go. Um, hold on, let me find it. Dun, 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 dun. The hump, yeah, there we go. The hump was the name given by Allied pilots in the Second World War to the eastern end of the Himalayan mountains, over which they flew, over, over which they flew military transport aircraft from India to China to resupply the Chinese war effort of Chiang Kai-shek and the units of the United States Army Air Forces based in China. Creating an airlift presented the USAAF a considerable challenge in 1942. It had no units trained or equipped for moving cargo and no airfields existed in the China-Burma-India theatre for basing the large number of transports that would be needed. Flying over the Himalayas was... There you go, you guys wanted to see me fly, fly over the Himalayas. Here you are. Um, <laughs> flying over the Himalayas was extremely dangerous and made more difficult by a lack of reliable charts, an absence of radio navigation aids and a dearth of information about the weather. The task was initially given to the US 10th Air Force and then to the AAF's Air Transport Command because the AAF had no previous airlift experience as a basis for planning it. It assigned commanders who had been key figures and found in the ATC in 1941-42 to build and direct the operation which included former civilians with extensive executive experience operating civil air carriers. So there you go, and there's a there's a map. There it is. Yeah, this bit over here. Look. Oh, there you go. This airlift to China, the hump route from Dinjan to Kunming. God damn that! That apparently though, it's really rough because you're you're constantly avoiding trying to avoiding crashing into mountains and stuff and all all sorts of shit. So that'd probably be quite a fun challenge. So yeah. That should be fun. Got loads of nice reviews as well. Apparently, got one PC Pilots Platinum Award, so and that's not given out um, without a good reason. So, Anyway, so they got the Airbus on here. Airbus, Aerosoft Airbus, yeah, A320. This I want to have one day.
Airburst is kind of weird though, like it's all fly by wire and shit, but I don't know if there's a good screenshot of it in here anywhere, but um, on the pilot side, because the pilot's obviously on the left, in, in spite of it being a big massive airliner, it uses tiny joysticks to control it. Um, now, I mean, it's not, not unheard of, I mean the Vulcan bomber has, you know, joysticks instead of um, a yoke which is the steering wheel type thing you can see in the Comanche, for example. But, it, but uh, I can't get a good screenshot of it here, but basically there's a little joystick down here, but on the left rather than the right, which is really bizarre to me. Like, you know, I suppose it's because you want to be using the right hand to push switches and buttons and all sorts of things in, a, in an airliner like that, and you're less going to be concerned with actually steering the plane because it's fly-by-wire and it's all kind of, you know... It, it's set up so it so you, you it's it's almost impossible for you to stall it or do anything stupid with it, but you know, it's still kind of odd. And I reckon, you know, if I, if I ever if I ever did get around to flying, I'd probably just just to make things awkward and realistic, I would put my joystick on the left and use my left hand with it, um, just to see what it's like. Put my throttles on the right. Still, yeah. Want, 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 want. And also, I don't know if they've got it on here. PMDG. Oh, they've got the FS to crew stuff for it. FS to crew is really cool because it lets you talk to your crew, including your co-pilot, with your microphone. It has, like, voice recognition software and stuff. So it's a bit like using voice attack for Elite Dangerous. Yep, 37 for a plane in a game. But that's just, you know... That's just what... Flight sims alike, man. You, you know, it seems like one plane, although technically it's two, because you get the A320 and the A321, but um, it's it's sort of, it's so in-depth that you could literally get hundreds of hours of, of enjoyment out of that. So, don't think of it as you're buying just a plane, think of it as you're buying a whole game with this thing, because that's really what you're doing. Yeah, seriously, dude. I know people who have spent, you know, hundreds and hundreds on on FSX. Um, it's no different, really. To well, in fact, I was gonna say it's no different to people spending thousands of quid on Star Citizen. But at least FSX is actually out. <laughs> at least you can actually play that. Um, so never mind. I mean, if you you get you want to get the the highest end of the scale possible, and a PMDG simulations, and these guys do Boeing airliners, Boeing the Boeing seven three seven, Boeing triple seven, seven four seven, all these here basically, including an MD eleven, whatever the hell that is, and a J forty one, and these guys. Basically, they they the that these ship with manuals from Boeing, you know, it's it's that detailed. Um, as I said before, these things people use them to uh, people. You oh, where's the bloody triple uh, seven? There we go. Um, people, actual pilots use these PMDG simulators made by these guys here for FSX to train for their actual exams to fly the real triple seven. So, you know. And and each of these is pretty freaking expensive from what I remember. It's yeah, see eighty nine dollars for this. Eighty nine dollars. That's a lot of money. Like no 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 word of a lie, but this is the sort of thing you could literally spend thousands of hours doing. And people frequently do. As a matter of fact, so but also you 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 people would use this as an educational tool as well. So a moving cockpit that sounds like fun. Yeah, <laughs> some of the features lists for these things are just ridiculous. That, by the way, has the uh, I think the the Boeing seven 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 has the world record for like the the longest distance flight or something, doesn't it? Really long distance plane, that thing. Yeah, 
Yeah, exactly. I mean, people build full, huge, gigantic, like, replica cockpits that are fully functional and work with, with FSX, so, you know. Some people play Dungeons and Dragons, other people strap themselves into a Airbus cockpit for the weekend. Just one of those things, isn't it? And other people spend, you know, thousands upon thousands of hours on, on World of Warcraft, for example, or people spend thousands of thousands of dollars on EVE Online, for example. You know, my brother's really, really into Elite. He does almost nothing but play Elite to almost obsessional levels, but it's really no different to some of the guys I've seen who fly these all the time. He's just, they're essentially doing the same thing, really. My brother, when he plays Lee, he just hauls cargo around all the time. So, you know, the only difference is he's doing it between planets. And some people watch live streams on Twitch at 3.50 in the morning. <laughs> on that bombshell, I think I'm going to go, everybody. Yikes. Oh, God, the Sim's been running this whole time. Bloody hell. Uh, <laughs> never mind, because it doesn't really matter. Give the aircraft some time to settle down and cool off. Uh, God, the scenery does look nice though, doesn't it? Look at all these forests and stuff around. Anyway, yeah, that's me done, everybody. Thank you for joining me. We'll probably do this again in the near future. I want to stream more often, as I said. This is a cool thing to stream, because I, I basically just get to... You know, I fly my plane, which is what I'd be doing anyway, and I get to interact with you guys quite easily because all I have to do is just flick on the autopilot and I can talk to you guys for a whole lot, you know, a while, and I can get up web pages and things and show them to you and do whatever. And like I said, it's something I've been doing anyway because I'm trying to learn it because, you know, at some point I'm going to do flying lessons, so... Doesn't hurt that this thing is gorgeous. Look at the reflective effects on the wing and stuff. I don't know how they do it. It's black magic mostly, I think, with A2A. With the stuff they make. Ah, oh, yes, I need to put... I've got two more little... Well, it's one more New Vegas episode along with a little intro bit that explains a few mod changes I made that needs to go up. And I will see if I can put that up before I go to bed. Um, oh, I forgot to lower the gamma on my stream. I almost forgot about that completely. I, I raised it because we were doing the nighttime stuff in the Lancaster. There we go. That's better. You guys were getting a slightly washed out version of, of the game there. Alright, yeah, anyway, glad you all had fun doing whatever you were doing. You know, I, I don't really mind. Like, I sometimes go, oh, you're just talking about Elder Scrolls lore again. But, you know, I don't really care. It's up to you guys. It's just nice having the company, I suppose. So, yeah, that's all it really is. I'm not, it's nothing serious, is it, really? It's just sort of, hey, I'm going to fly a plane for a couple of hours. Why don't you come and join me? We can talk about random bullshit in the chat. Enjoy. Anyway, I'm I'm gonna go. Um, don't know when. I don't know when I'll do this next before anyone asks. Um, it just seems to be a thing I do off the cuff. Sometimes I just sit down. And I think you know what? I feel like doing a stream. I feel like I'm, I'm being, I've been a bit antisocial, and I want to go 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 live and play it that way instead of just playing by myself. So I'll endeavour to live stream some other stuff at some point too. So anyway, yeah, I'm gonna shut up now and I'm gonna. Fuck off to bed, so ta ta everybody. If I can remember how to stop the stream, oh, there it is. <laughs>